uh, the last thing that you guys had done is woken up and heard, well, woken up from a very loud bang outside. Went outside to see you guys deciphered that it was a magical fireball that went off and blew up right in front of your guys' place. You guys went outside, saw roughly, you know, 10 or 12 bodies or so over where Akasha is, uh, not too far from the entrance of the tavern. And then uh, you saw a griffin with a rider on it land on the building right above you guys. So, so the griffin rider, or the, the griffin lands, and after he's done flapping his wings and stops so he can actually hear you guys, so his voice will carry, uh, he says, uh, what the hell happened here? You guys okay? Yeah, we're fine. Uh, there's been some trouble at our at our bar here uh, over overnight anyways, but um, it looks like something blew up out here. We just came out to see what it was. Okay, he looks over and he's like, okay, oh, well, I see something exploded over there. Apparently we got some casualties. The watch is on its way. Uh, all right, looking at you guys. Well, uh, you guys own that uh, own, own that tavern over there, don't you? You guys are the new owners of the ghost bar, aren't you? Yep. Sure. Okay. Uh, well, I'm assuming you guys probably wouldn't want to try to blow up your own tavern, and if you did, you missed, so you're pretty dumb. So I am going to circle around the block and see if I can see any suspicious activity. If you guys see anything before the watch gets here, just let me know. I'll be back in a minute. And he flies off. He was a helpful, helpful little griffin. But, what was that? He was a helpful griffin. Yes, he was. It's a, well, yeah, it's a, a city rider, watchman. Rider was talking. Yeah, it's a city watchman yeah. riding a griffin. Um, so the, on the map, then, G, the there's three kind of circles that you drew, and then an arrow pointing at a bigger circle with an X in it. What were the three? I guess that, that's over by where Akasha is. What are? I guess what are those? I think you mentioned it already, but I was looking those at the different bodies. Things. I think. But yeah. the big X is where the explosion went off, right? Yeah. The big Indeed. X is where the explosion went off, and the arrow was just pointing to the explosion one. So that's why that's why the arrow is still there to so let you guys know that that's what the circle was. So okay, so then the small circles are where bodies are. Yeah, that just that area is strewn with you know roughly ten to twelve different bodies over there. You're assuming casualties of the fireball because some of them are still on fire, some are singed, they de you know and flew that way from the impact. So all right, uh, <clears throat> does I guess. It's far enough away from the front of our door that it doesn't look like it was... I guess, do, is there any impression that this was an attack on us at all, or was it just coincident? Uh, you don't really know, but you're assuming that, again, just like the Griffin Rider said, you're assuming if they actually wanted to hit the building, they probably would have. I mean, you're guessing somebody skilled enough to use a fireball would actually have somewhat of a brain. So you're assuming that um, the building itself might not have been the target, but obviously it's pretty close to your guys' place, so... Uh, you don't know if it has anything to do with you, but it's definitely worth uh, finding out about. So. so just coincidence then that I, you know, blew up a similar bomb outside last, or, you know, six hours before this, eight hours before this? And, yeah, the, the City Watch didn't care about that one. That one didn't matter. But this one is <laughs> really important. So, because this happened during the daytime, so it matters. <clears throat> so. Okay. Narratively, I would just say that, obviously, you guys live in your shop. Nobody else around here. Uh, seems to live in their shop. It's just the shops themselves. So at night, you'd assume there wasn't as many people around to hear it and blah, blah, blah kind of thing. And you guys do kind of live in the ghetto, so they don't always uh, check everything. I guess is how you can say that that happened. But yeah, I wasn't expecting you to put an explosion off, which was very ironic. What old, uh, was that a firework gunshot or magic missile ghetto? <laughs> yep. So, Have we been able yeah, to tell so, anything about the bodies? I know Akasha was looking at them, right? Yeah, yeah can, anybody <clears throat> who's going to go over... Uh, well, you're both right there, so can Rob and Akasha give me uh, an investigation check, please? And then, um, if you want to, Sako, you can go check, too. It's up to you. You guys still got a few minutes before the watch arrives. I'm going to kind of look at the explosion area, just kind of searching for any parts or anything that uh, might give a clue. Can you please also give me an investigation check, Sako? Oh. I think we found out for sure that it was arcane in nature, though not a bomb. That was something that I looked at from the balcony before coming down. But I didn't get a close look, though. Sako? Okay. And, uh... Okay. 
All right. Um, when you guys, uh, Sako, when you look over, uh, you just see that the direction of the fireball was obviously coming from, I mean, it, it, you know, if you would say that you guys are west, that it was coming from the east based obviously on how the bodies were thrown and everything like that as well, too. Uh, but you can, it looks like um, it wasn't, it, it looks like it did explode in that direction, but a lot of the force from the way that it looks, uh, it looks like some of the force uh, went more up instead of west if you know what i mean so it looks like it was um maybe not aimed very well possibly so i mean so, it still apparently did what it was supposed to do hopefully because it knocked a bunch of people out but based on you would assume from the direction it was launched from that more of the fire and force would have carried towards your uh door where a lot some of the uh explosion looks like it probably went up because like the street lamps and stuff around there part of that was burned a little bit too so it's not aimed very well so if, if, if it was targeting these people specifically, the the attacker didn't put it in the middle of them, he put it ahead of them, so in front of them to knock them backwards instead? Something like that, you'd assume. Again, you don't know if it was malicious or not, but it wasn't aimed exactly the way that you would assume it would be, so uh, a little bit of carelessness on the uh, attacker's part is what Sokka would have noticed. Again, some of the force, more of the force going upwards instead of forwards, basically. So. Uh, oh, and then quickly, you... go ahead, G. Oh, I was just going to say, go ahead, because I was just going to say what you guys found. Uh, looking well, at the then, pile just, of just real quick then before that, so none of them are alive then? Are they, I mean, they're definitely dead, dead? Like, we can't, you know, resuscitate one of them? Let me double check, but I believe they all are, are completely perished. Let me double check. If if any of them are still you know just unconscious, then uh, we could potentially you know help them a little bit, get them back up, and find out you know if there's any uh, you know reason they may have been targeted and so on. When you look, they are all dead as shit. So, uh, you, I mean, you don't know if they all died instantly, but they are all currently deceased. Did Akasha find anything out? I know she well, she was looking at them last time. I don't know if we actually got to it at the end of last week's session. But nothing from looking at them as far as, like, any consistencies amongst the bodies or anything of that sort? When you guys look at them now, you guys do see that there is um, <clears throat> 11 people. So that's the number. Uh, you see uh, an old woman who doesn't seem like she stands out much. Uh, a couple of males wearing... Um, had uh, leather armor and long swords on them, so they were armed for whatever reason. And there was okay, a couple other people, uh, a half elf man and two female uh, women that just were wearing regular uh, nice clothes. So you would assume they're more of the uh, upper class people of the Water Davians. And nothing really stands out about them. They just look like they were a little bit nicer looking. Uh, you do see a gnome. And he has a... His cloak is burned from the thing, and he was holding a dagger in his hand. And then there are two dead uh, halfling women and two dead halfling men uh, who had... The women had instruments in their hands. And so you assume maybe they were, you know, playing for the... Playing for a crowd or something out there that's playing for themselves, so... The gnome isn't in purple, is he? <laughs> No, he's not. <clears throat> and we don't recognize any of them? Uh, no, you actually don't recognize any of them directly. Uh, the halflings, um, you don't see Kelso, your friend in there. So you don't recognize any of them. So The men in leather armor with long swords, do they have any uh, identifying tattoos? Mm. Yes, actually. Uh when Akasha looked, because she rolled a little bit better, she notices that uh, there's a, um, a wing snake on one of them. All right, so a couple, uh, so one of them was Anthony, on the other one's not. Yeah, uh, you don't. You only saw the tattoo on one of them, so you, you the other one could be possibly part of the gang, you know, running with them or whatever. But you only see one of the men in the leather armor had the wing snake tattoo, and it was on his right arm, his forearm. You guys want to right, rifle some pockets? Absolutely. Definitely. And also see if there's any weird tattoos we can see on them. 
I'll keep I'll watch go. real quick. I'll uh, I'll keep watch real quick to see if uh, the, the, the watchman's gonna come back if you guys want to start running through pockets. All right. So go ahead and place yourself wherever you want to go, G, to kind of do a lookout, uh, well, and then, or are you just gonna stay where you are? No, I mean the Griffin was pretty loud uh, with his wing flaps, right? So I mean I'm just gonna follow those, so at least that, and then just kind of keep an ear out for. Uh, uh, you know w which directions basically the alley could run in case you know watchmen are going to be running up obviously they'd make some noise okay uh the griffin went off to the east when you heard him going that way uh and that's still the direction that he's in he's kind of circling around but he's still heading to the east now and then uh he's good to, he said he's just going to check around the block so you're guessing you don't know how far he's going to go but he's you can still hear his wings so okay if the map makes sense then it looks like the alley runs to the east anyways it looks like there's a couple of other potential ways but uh you know, just in, and I just moved myself to a spot that I can at least hear and, and uh, potentially see. Okay. And um, Eldor, can you please give me another investigation check since you're checking the bodies again? And what was that, honey? I didn't catch what you said. I didn't say anything. Okay, you started to say something. I'm sorry. Mike might have started to pick it up or something. Did you see the ring go green or something? Oh, no, you just... I thought you were saying something a minute ago, babe. So. Oh, just that I'm checking the bodies for whatever they have. Okay. And uh, when you get closer, Eldor, even with that not very good roll, uh, you do notice when you get closer to the gnome, because it's not just your eyes, but your nose as well, too, uh, you do notice that on the bottom of the gnome's boots and the bottom of his cloak, too, the very like the lower part of both of them at the end, that there doesn't smell very good and that there's like some dried waste on it. So, Does that dried waste smell like bat guano? <laughs> No, Shut you would. No, I mean that's that's. A, it sounds like a, just a dumb joke, but no, it's a legitimate question. That's the the back one is what you need for a fireball spell. Oh, okay. Uh, no, it does not. It, it you would have. It's it reminds you of the sewers that you guys were down in. So, and since you were looking at him, guys, do find that the gnome has a little pouch with some gemstones on him. So. We will put those in the party inventory. Oh, which one's the party inventory again, G? One of the ones across the top, right? The two people? Yeah, it's the two people. Yeah, there it is. There and it then is. you'll awesome. see the inventory tab. Sweet. That audio is super quiet. Do you want to see if you... Is that turned... It's not all the way up, I assume, right? No, I'll definitely turn that up a little bit more. I just... Yeah, I didn't want it to be too loud. Did that go in there? Nope, I don't believe so. Uh, it's the, the bag. It has the the gemstones, not the money in it. So where would I would I just drag that and drop it in the party inventory part? Yeah, if or? it's if it's not coins, then you would drop it on the parcel items side. Okay. And it'll just show up as an item. There you go. Five there gemstones. There we go. I did the wrong thing. There we go. Yeah. So you guys <laughs> uh, found the gnome had a bag with uh, five gemstones on him. So which you guys can check out a little bit further if, whenever you want to or when you get a minute. So. And let me turn the volume up a little bit. Any better? Because I can still go more. I just don't want to make it too loud. It's still really quiet. It's audible, but it's just really quiet. There you go. Crying like That's little better. Bitches. Yeah. Are there people around? Like uh, other other people in the in the alleyway? Uh, there's a few people definitely did. They popped out and looked around and stuff. Uh, at this time in the morning, there was a few of the shop owners were around too already, even though it's early. They were already in their shops, so they peeped their head out to check around. Uh, and so you do see a couple of people. There is um, a, a few of the different shop owners around here are uh, keeping their heads out to check around. So see what's going on. But they're kind of a little scared, so they're not really coming out. But yeah, they're looking out there, looking out their doors. Some of the local shop owners in your area over here. I'll just call over my shoulder. Do you guys find anything interesting? Do we find anything else besides the gems? Uh, no, that is actually all you found of value. Just a pouch of gems. 
Uh, gems are nice and all. I was just I was hoping for, you know, one of these had done it. Like maybe the gnome blew himself up on accident or something like that. Something to give us an idea of what ha why this happened. Yeah. Do any of the bodies look more burnt than the others? Yeah. When you look, you see that the gnome took a pretty good hit. That's why. I mean, they're all pretty burned, but but the gnome took a pretty good hit. You're guessing he probably. You would assume he probably died like instantly. So. And uh, again, his cloak was pretty burned up, and he did have a dagger in his hand. Uh, it still does. So you assume it was there, obviously, when he died because nobody had time to run out here and try to plant any shit on the bodies. So. But he doesn't have any kind of like a wand or anything. Uh, he doesn't have a spell component pouch. No. No, you just noticed that burned cloak, the dagger in his hand. He had that bag with the gemstones, and at the bottom of his shoes, his boots, excuse me, and the bottom of his cloak as well too, because you'd assume since he's so fucking short, that uh, had dried waste on it. So. Well, I mean, Which if he was down in the sewers, and you know, he was a target potentially of Xanathar's or the, the Xanathar's guild of the Zents, then I mean, they could have potentially accidentally hit one of their own, but it could have been an attack on the. Uh, well, shit, I don't know. I don't know why they would be targeting a gnome specifically, though. But it doesn't seem like it has any connection to Emic, at least. Yeah. Yeah, unless he just decided to try to kill any patrons that were coming to your guys' place or something like that. But he doesn't seem like he's that fucking dumb. He knows how, he knows how uh, much the, the City Watch likes to try to mess with people. So you know, blowing fools up like we were saying isn't gonna exactly sneak past him very well. So if he did do that, he's not very smart for it. All right, and then you guys notice you hear the sound of feet moving and about 20 or so of the city guard with uh, two with a, a sergeant and then well, you'd assume he's a sergeant, you know, dress better and, and everything. Uh, and then a couple of other people with him, too, that are not armored do arrive and they start blocking off all the entrances and stuff like that to block, you know, to quarantine off the place. So then when the Griffin Rider sees them coming, he actually comes back over to sit where he was before. Let me drop some of them on here. So they were coming up from over this way. So he is behind over there. There's your captain. And then he has his guys blocking the thing. And the captain comes and he asks you guys, he's like, Whoa, what the hell happened here? What's all the fire? I don't know, we woke up to this. He's like, so you, you didn't blow anybody up over here? I don't know, you don't look like you're too worried about it. If you did blow somebody up, you're not afraid to get arrested, so. So, you can't tell me anything? You don't know anything? Nope. Okay. And the Griffin Rider says, I looked around, sir, I, I didn't I didn't find anything else. I just, there's some people, you know, walking about to see what's going on from the confusion. Local shop owners, people in their heads out and stuff. And otherwise, I just saw this group of people here. Uh, they own that tavern right there next to where the blast was. So, uh, you know, I was thinking if they were trying to cause some trouble, they're not very smart doing it right in front of their place. So don't really think it's much of them. second rain through some here and then a couple of the other people that are with him that were not armored move up this way to come check out what was going on they're, they're looking through the bodies over there so well, actually this one is over here with the guard he's looking at the fireball explosion and this guy over here is looking at the bodies and checking them out and everything and actually, I think I have... Yes. Here is the two guys that are not armored. So... We recognize either one. Mm, nope. You don't, but they do. Actually, yeah. The, the one over closest to you guys... Uh, he introduces himself. He says that... His name is Barnabas. And which which one is he? He's the, the one, one closest to you guys, the one with the purple. 
Okay, with the robes. Short guy. Yeah, the short guy with the robes. He says that his name is Barnabas Blastwin. And. Yeah, uh, he says his name, and he's from the Watchful Order of Magician Protectors. So uh, he heard, got word that, you know, a fireball went off over here, so he's coming, him and his friend, to come check it out. He was from what? The Watchful Order of Magists and Protectors. Are they detectives then? Like mage detectives? Yeah, essentially. And because they heard something arcane happen, you know, fireball going off over here. So they are coming over to check it out and see if they can find out what happened. And there he's, check he's sitting there checking it out. And uh, after the a few, you know, probably been like 10 minutes or so, and the uh, sergeant speaks up. He's like, Barnabas, hurry up, man. We got to get these guys. We got to get these bodies to the temples. Get them prepared and everything. He's like, oh, don't rush me. Don't rush me. I feel like we're missing something, but I can't tell what it would be. I mean, I, I, we're probably past the point where we can, you know, further investigate the bodies, but I don't know what else to do. What do you guys think? Yeah, it just seems odd that it was right in front of our bar. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, it, with the timing and everything, it, it was just coincidence, of course, for, for, you know, the fight the night before, but it doesn't seem like it's Emic, but I don't know. I, don't, I guess I don't see any connection to... I, I don't see any obvious connection to the Xanathar Guild or the Xanth or anybody else. Barnabas, Barnabas comes over a little bit closer to you guys here, so uh, that way, you know, he tries to speak a little bit quietly, and he says, you know, after his investigation and stuff, he says, uh, it, it seems that Gnome was the target of the fireball. Uh, apparently it worked because he looks like he's long perished, uh, and it looks like, I would assume, he was heading for your tavern. Are you guys friends with any gnomes? I mean, I wouldn't you, say friends. You know this feller? Not that, not that we can tell. I don't think so. Maybe he uh, was nomadic and just walking around. <laughs> Good uh, question. Nomadic. The, the gnome isn't isn't any of the gnomes that were there last night, right? Those were halflings. Yeah. Oh, were they halflings? And when you guys were looking at him, you guys don't you you don't really don't think it's um. Uh, I can't remember his dang names, but from Zoblobs. Zoblob. Yeah, he calls himself Zoblob. The the shopkeeper from the purple. Yeah, that's why I asked if, if the gnome was wearing purple. He wasn't, you know, his cloak was black. You know, his clothes were not purple or anything. Uh, and you noticed, again, they weren't tattoos. They were drawn on his face. But you've, all, you've only met him once. But he had those uh, eyeballs, you know, drawn on his face. Purple eyeballs, too. He was, a, know, he was a deep gnome anyway, so his skin would he be was, darker. He was, yes. I, I forgot about that. You're right. He was dark, and this is just a your standard cracker gnome. He's a saltine variety, <laughs> the dead one. So, so you're nope. It's not your old friend Zoblob. So, so he says, okay, you don't know the name, the gnome, because he definitely looks like he was coming your way. Uh, when it hit him, he didn't see it coming. That's for sure. Hit him right in right in the back. Fucking, he was probably dead before he even knew what happened. Uh, and. And, and it looks like from the pace of everything, it looks like he was actually, the gnome was uh, not just walking, but running to your guys' place. So maybe maybe somebody was after him. He's coming to you guys for protection or something. I, I don't really know. But I can tell you that this gnome was at a steady pace heading for your guys' tavern when he was blown to smithereens. Everybody else, I think, was just a casualty, uh, an accidental casualty. So Yeah, I mean, he may have been, but we don't know him. So, I mean, if he was coming to us for protection, it would have been news to us, too. Okay. All right. Yeah, just reading up. Give me one second here, guys. We didn't find any type of identification on him. We don't have his name or anything. No, you didn't see anything else that would have really identified him. Uh, nothing that you, you know, that you recognize. So nothing that would have had his name or anything like that on it. And again, you, if you've seen him, it's you never really met him before. So. And he didn't have any tattoos, just the guys with the swords? Just one of the guys with the swords had a winged snake. Yeah, so Barnabas looks over at the, the sergeant, and he says, uh, I mean, you can tell by the way the fireball was aimed, the casualties, all that stuff. Uh, these these fine folks over here, and he points over at, at you guys, and uh, goes to, and says, uh, these people, they 
I'm saying they're cleared of any wrongdoing because they didn't have anything to do with this. And the sergeant says, yeah, that's, that's what we thought too. We just wanted to double check and be sure. So, and then the sergeant start loading up the bodies and stuff and uh, taking them to the temple so that way they can be, you know, cremated or, or whatever. So, so they're prepared and everything. So they're starting to clean the area up. The people that are gathering around, I just want to, like, kind of scan the crowd, I guess. So, so the people that are around, do any of them look like they could be, you know, potential? So, you know, crim, the criminal often returns to the scene of the crime kind of thing. Like, do any of them look like they could have been involved or, you know, look suspicious in any way? Um, go ahead and, well, what you, again, you see uh, just your standard gawkers are starting to kind of gather around now. Again, the city watch doesn't let them very close, so the people are like... Uh, Today. Okay, I think those got accidentally moved, but they're like on the other side of that bridge over there. You know, like the city watch is quarantining off that whole area over there, so they're not very close. But you can look over at them. They seem like pretty standard folk. And again, you do see the other shop owners are still either looking out their windows, like you know, not trying to be seen. They don't care if they're being seen, looking out their windows or uh, cracking the doors and looking out and stepping folk in their heads out. But they seem a little uh, like they want to be cautious about going out because they have no idea who they don't want to get killed you know they don't know what's going on so they're staying in there uh, and if you want to look over at the crowd can you give me an investigation no perception check sorry G. to see if any of them seem odd 23 yeah you look over and you see they just look like standard folks none of them are even armed except for maybe like a dagger here and there they look very scared so if anybody over there did have anything to do with this, then they're pretty good at uh, looking like weak, you know, average town folks and uh, good at playing scared because all these people are definitely pretty freaked out after this in this mm -hmm. neighborhood. All right. I was hoping to know to spot gang members or something, but I'm at a loss. I don't know what's what. Well, <clears throat> that the gnome was the target anyway, so we don't know him. I'm not sure where to go with it, I suppose. When Barnabas is leaving, because the the crew, <coughs> excuse me, the city watch has the uh, <coughs> and the people that came to help have the bodies cleared up, packed up, they're taking them away. Uh, and when Barnabas leaves, he says, uh, "I mean, the city watch, he, when they're leaving, to where they can't hear him, he's looking at you guys, and he says, you know, the city watch is going to quote unquote investigate this and check into it, but they probably don't really care too much. So if you guys want to find out, uh, I'm sure somebody else around here, maybe you're." fellow shop owners in the area they got here early this morning they were awake before you guys i'm assuming so maybe they'd uh maybe they seen something i don't know but i have to get back and start telling everybody about my findings and doing some investigations so um let's get a good like description of the gnome as best we can like jot it down on some paper or something so that we can uh i guess talk to others about it and you know, make sure that we have a proper description of him to see if anybody else, you know, knew him or, or would have recognized him before he was blown to bits. Okay, so uh, you guys, especially Eldor, searching through his pockets and stuff like that, you guys got a pretty good idea of what he looks like. I guess whatever average height for a gnome is, what's that? Three, three and a half feet or so, something like that. Uh, white hair, uh, again, white skin gnome, not a. a deep gnome uh, was wearing just brown and, and green brown pants and a green shirt with a black cloak that was severely burned he was majorly burned hit from the back and he had a dagger in his hand when he was walking uh, you know he was steadily heading for your place like running or walking very fast towards your place from what Barnabas had told you when he was hit in the back with the fireball you know from behind with the fireball no he wasn't directly hit with it but you know what I mean so Quick question too. Then the the guys in leather, uh, one of them that had the Zent tattoo, uh, were there? You said they had long swords. Were they like? Did they have them out? Like were they holding them or were they like sheathed? They were both sheathed. The gnome was the only one that had a weapon in his hand. The other ones actually didn't have <clears throat> weapons at all. But again, the the two people in the armor sheathed swords, and the gnome had a dagger. The other ones either didn't weren't really carrying much, or those uh, some of the halflings had instruments in their hands. Musical instruments. Hmm. The pouch. Uh, who grabbed that pouch of, of gems that you guys mentioned? Eldor did. 
And that was taken off of the gnome, right? Yes. Is there anything identifying in it? Is there like a monogram, you know, on the pouch or something? No, it's just a plain pouch, a drawstring, you know, like velvety, soft kind of pouch. Uh, the gemstones are in there, uh, you know, but decent value, but nothing extreme. So maybe it's like some garnets or something. Uh, you'd assume it's probably about 100, 100 gold pieces worth of gems. So None of them have any symbols or anything cut into them. None of them, none of them are extraordinary, and the bag doesn't have any defining characteristics. Guess start asking around. All right, guys. So you know, there's a couple of different shops uh, around you. Um, one of them is uh, Corlon's Crown, uh, and these are all shops that are again in Troll Skull Alley, close to you guys. Uh, that would have been, you know, visible. The, if somebody was there, they, they would have been able to see what happened. Also at the Tiger's Eye, another shop which is actually just not far from that one there. So those two places, it looks like, uh, were close enough and, you know, where they're located, they could have potentially saw what happened if you want to go check and see if anybody is there. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you guys want to go to Corlin's Crown or Tiger's Eye first? I mean, they're both pretty much right next door to each other. So... Um, I don't know. What do you think? Tigers. Whichever one, whichever one seem, whichever one would be open earliest, I guess. So, because it's still early in the morning, but if you know, basically, if it seems like one of these businesses, if we've noticed over the past couple of weeks, opens earliest, then odds of there being somebody there that potentially could have witnessed it—that's where we want to go first. Okay. Uh, you know that uh, Corlin's Crown, whoever owns it there, because uh, you guys. Are not very neighborly, and you had you didn't go by there yet when you when you first got to Troll Skull Alley, so you have not met the owner there yet. But uh, you do know that you you see the lights on in there, you know, like six usually. So you'd assume that Corlin's Crown, whoever owns that, was probably there. So you guys want to head there? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. And again, and they're they're very close to each other. So when you get close to Corlin's Crown, you do see uh, the the woman the owner well there's a woman there you're, you're assuming she's the owner uh, is looking out the window and then not far from it you look over at the tiger's eye and you do see that there is somebody looking through the window out there too so um you don't know if the person from tiger's eye well you don't know if either one of them were there but it might be worth talking to both of them so you guys gonna go into Corlin's crown yeah okay and uh, the lady pops up and when you open the door she says we're not open yet but i don't think you guys are here for business huh yeah, we're hoping you might have seen what happened outside. She says, uh, yeah, actually, well, I heard. I, I was uh, I was in the greenhouse on the second floor up here in my shop when I was watering some plants, uh, and then a big old explosion happened, and my windows broke out everywhere. The uh, glass went spraying, and luckily I didn't get hit, though. Thank God. Uh, and then I looked out the window after, well, you know, the broken window, uh, after the explosion and there was a lot of smoke but I do I know, I know I saw a cloaked man uh, and he was looked like he was rifling through the, the pockets of a really short person out there uh, and, and right by the fireball over there and then after he rifled through those really short guy's pockets then he he tried to run away but he was limping so he, he did get away but he wasn't very fast you know and he was burned pretty bad um, and he looked like he was you know possibly running from something I don't know maybe that fireball was for him he went towards the bent nail, I think. The bent nail shop. The short person was that, uh, well, gnome height. Was he wearing green pants and a brown shirt? Or the other way around, I think. The brown pants and a green shirt? Well, I saw, he was pretty much on fire, a little short guy. I, I did see uh, a black cloak, uh, and then I think I saw, since, you know, a lot of the, the cloak was burned, I, I did see some brown pants, so... Yeah. And he, he took something? Like, took something out of his pockets or something? Whoever that guy was, he dug through his pockets and pulled something out of that little short gnome's pockets and then limped away. So, I, I don't know if he was the one that made the explosion or what, but he was hurt, though, too. So if he did, then he didn't do it very well, and then he, and he burned himself as well. And then he ran off. It looked like he was going towards a bed nail. Is the way to the vent nail, this is a DM question, um, is that 
like uh, the main street like basically was he going to the bent nail or is that just the direction that, that she's describing because that's down the street yeah well all she saw after the explosion is that he was there rifling through the pockets and then walked off towards the bent nail so she's not sure where he was headed before the explosion happened but that's where he went after he rifled through the gnome's pockets was towards the bent nail so and then i can i'll pull up the map and look at it just double check though because i know we have that map for troll school so, let me pull it up. What do you guys think? I mean, the, I don't know that she has any... Maybe she might have more information, but it sounds like that's pretty much, you know, what happened. But we should probably at least check with the neighbor before we head down to the to the bit nail. What do you think? Yeah, just double check it here. So, Coraline's Crown is just south of where your guys' tavern is. And the bent nail is what direction? And the bent nail is uh, east of where you guys are. Okay, so what you guys would do? Yeah. So so if you go down the the side street there, you'll come to that to the Coraline's Crown. And so if you go south from your place, and then if you go east from your place, and then take that road south. Um, actually, here I'll, I'll pull up the other version for you guys. Give me just one second here. Share it again. Here. Okay. You guys are the the one with the on the corner with the circle in it because that's the rampart. Yeah, that's your guys's place. Uh, the just to the south of you guys is Coraline's Crown, and then over. Can you see the the pins in the map? No, we don't see pins. Okay, and then so if you go uh, to the street just north of your guys's place, and then take the street south, at the end of that street, well, you know where that street dead ends and moves around. That's the bed nail. So. Uh... That's the direction that the guy, the limping guy that stole from the gnome was. So they blew that, blew the shit up in front of your place, and then he was going around over that way. So the so explosion, based have... on where the door is, the explosion was like here? Yeah. So, um, again, sorry to retcon this, but she must have been out walking around a little bit, because she did see, you know, the, the pile of bodies and stuff like that, and then saw the person running off towards the met nail that way. Okay. So, uh, so she was in front of her place, and then saw him go, well, she saw him go up that alley <laughs> and then go east, and didn't see him. But, you know, that's the way towards the bent nails. So, so he was going down that street that the arrow that Jeremy put on there is. He, he ran down that street, is what you saw. All right. We probably need to hurry a little bit. But uh, one, I mean, I want to politely, uh, you know, ask her name. Oh, she says, uh, sorry, I'm in all the confusion. Being rude here, my name is Fala Lefalier. I'll type that out for you guys. And the, spell Coraline's crown for me, too, if you would. Mm -hmm. Owner. Chop. Okay. Uh, and is that like a... I mean, she, she said greenhouse, right? Yeah. I will... Give me just one second. I'm going to pull that back up and see exactly what her shop is. Because she actually is one of your guys. It actually is a shop that you can... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you can actually it's a usable shop. So okay, let me let me pull this up again. That would be useful potentially for me, anyways. But I just wanted to have my notes right. She says, uh, oh yeah, uh, in my shop, I guess I'm, I should explain this too, what I sell here. Uh, I'm an herbalist, and um, I, I try to make uh, medicines and, and stuff like that. So, I, and then I, I, make, I can even make them into potions. So, that's really what I do. I grow the herbs myself. Uh, if somebody wants to actually buy the herbs, they can. Most people don't really know what to do with them, so I brew them up, make potions for people, and sell those. Well, that sounds handy. Uh, you know, pardon the rudeness, but we need to... Uh... We need to run off. Uh, we'll, we'll probably come back later to, uh, uh, you know, maybe shop. So, thank you for your time. She says, "All right, thank you." <clears throat> and and uh, and she's like, "I hope you maybe can figure out what's going on. That's pretty scary." And so, just so I don't forget about it, that is what she offers at her shop for future. Okay. Uh, what was the tiger's that. eye? Is next. Yeah. Uh, and is... the tiger's eye is. Okay, uh, so Tiger's Eye would be uh, just to the east of your guys' place, a couple of buildings to the east. So if you go out on the on the main road, it's the third building 
uh, across from that street from, from where you guys are at, so just you guys is east. So, hang on. Let me put a... Bam! Can you guys see that? The one I just kind of circled? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it took a second to show up, yeah. You Sorry, can, that's you can the draw the same, the same like arrows and shapes and stuff, you can do those too. Yeah, Not that just, it matters. Okay an arrow okay but that is the tiger's eye so just to the east of you guys' place okay as she uh, that's, says that's west um, by the way g west i'm sorry yes just the west of you guys' place follow says uh i know i saw the shop owner from the tiger's eye looking around too they might know something yeah let's go drop by there before we head out towards the bent nail what do you guys think yeah <clears throat> it's better to be informed yeah all right let me bring it back up where I was in the thing here. So you guys head over to the tiger's eye to go talk. Okay, and when you guys go over to the tiger's eye, um, there is uh, somebody who is, uh, well, there's two people in there. Uh, you see a water Davian female uh, standing in there, uh, and then you do see and then you see uh, a man sitting in there too, a uh, human man sitting in there. So they're like, uh, "Hi, uh, we're we know you guys are uh, our neighbors over there. I'm assuming you're here to see if we heard anything, unless you need a private investigator." And uh, the man looks up at you guys. He's like, "If you," and he reaches his hand out to shake you guys' hand. He's like, uh, "My name's uh, Shaft. I'm the local private investigator in town." And he says, uh, the, the lady says, I actually, the uh, lady says, I, I saw, I saw something go on when I heard that explosion. Um, I, I ran out and I looked as I was over here. Uh, I was going to hire Shaft to, uh, for personal reasons to go spy on somebody I know. But uh, I, well, I ran over and I saw a man running away, but it, it didn't really look like a man, though. It was almost like, you know, like a marionette puppet, like that, but it was moving. And there wasn't any strings or anything on it. It, it was... You know, it was big. It wasn't just a little one. And uh, I, I saw him, and then he jumped up on a rooftop. Uh, he threw something into that crowd, and, and it exploded. And, and then I just saw those poor little halflings were sitting there and playing their instruments, and they were burned right there, man. And some gnome and some people. Man, it was terrible. Wait, hang on. So saw this, this puppet man jump up on a rooftop and then throw something, and that blew up? Yeah, he, he just little, I could barely even see what it was. It's just little, looked like a little circular thing. He, he took it and he threw it into the crowd. And then a second later, it, it just blew up. Like, like it was supposed to be, you'd think it was this huge bomb and all it just saw was this little tiny black circle. So it does sound like it was, a, I mean, I guess it could be some arcane means of a bomb. So you're saying he was made out of wood? I, I, I he wasn't made out of flesh i know that i don't know if he was made out of wood or not but he he looked like a puppet you know like round parts where his legs and stuff were and then little parts where maybe it's like his knees or something were uh, very shambly moving very unnatural it there's no way that was human i'd swear it looked like a puppet without strings and but bigger than a puppet you know not not quite as big as a full-grown man but it was way bigger than a regular puppet moving on its own what did this puppet do after the explosion? I, I just saw him. Um, he was, he jumped up on the rooftop and, and threw that down, and then he just ran off. And I didn't, couldn't see. He jumped to a different rooftop, and I lost sight of him. I, I ran off. I ran out to, a little bit further to see I, if I could see where he went, but uh, I was just, he was, you know, too high because I couldn't see where he was, and I didn't even see which way he went. Was the puppet wearing a cloak? No. No, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, he had clothes on and stuff. You know, I'm guessing to try to make himself look normal. But he wasn't. He wasn't wearing a cloak, though. No. All right. So the puppet is not the one that uh, took the thing off of the gnome, then. No. She says, "Have you guys ever ever heard of stuff like that moving around? Who would believe that a puppet would just move on its own?" But I'm not crazy. I don't know if it was actually a puppet, but it, that's what it looked like. So we did just recently see some scarecrows moving on their own, but scarecrows? What is going on here? I'm just gonna—I'm going home. I'm just gonna go lock myself in my house. And she leaves. 
walks down the road, you're assuming towards her house. So. Did we get her name? We did get her name, did we? No. No. Um, but did you guys say that out loud? Did you say that out loud, Ruff? Uh, I, I probably would have asked her name as she was leaving. Okay. Uh, and she says, oh, sorry, uh, my name is uh, Jezrin Horn Raven. I'll spell it out for you guys. And she's, you know, just remind you guys that she was here hiring Shaft about us to use the services to uh, do some investigation for her on somebody of a personal matter. So. Uh, she's leaving. Shaft is still standing there? Yeah. He said, no, this is his. It's a private. The Tiger's Eye is his shop. Oh, a I A private see. investigator place. So not shop, but he is a private investigator for hire. And he's and this is his shop. The Tiger's Eye is, and she was there, uh, inquiring about his services. Gotcha. When the explosion happened. Well, how about you, Shaft? Did you see anything? You know, I didn't really see too much because I was sitting here at the desk, uh, you know, not facing the window. And then she was kind of looking out the window when she was talking to me because I think whatever, you know, what she was hiring me about was definitely bothering her personally. So she was kind of staring out the window. I don't think she wanted to have to look me in the eye asking me to do what she wanted me to investigate. So, uh, and then I heard a big blast too. Uh, it rattled the windows, but it didn't. It didn't break them, but. I mean, I definitely heard the windows rattle and stuff, and then she ran outside. So then I got up and went to when I didn't see anything. When I went out there, like she did, I just saw, you know, what bodies and smoke and some fire. So she, and he's like, but I did see a little boy though, uh, a local kid, Martin. Uh, he he always hangs around here. He just plays in the neighborhood all the time. He's a local kid. Uh, he might have seen something because I saw him running away, scared, home, and he was he was hightailing it. So. I think maybe he might have saw something. And then he tells you, oh, he just lives down the way over there and kind of points, you know, down towards uh, where Markham's house is. So. All right. Well, I mean, we can go talk to him, maybe check out the rooftops where the, where the puppet, where she said the puppet was. What do you guys think? Yeah. All right. I find out about this, this Pinocchio situation here. <laughs> Seriously. All right. So you guys head over that way. Um, are you guys all going to go talk to Martin first, or are you guys going to split up and somebody's going to go look at the roofs, or what? Because you guys mentioned both. So. I can climb up on the roofs and, and check out that if, uh, if you guys want to go talk to the boy. Okay. Okay, guys. So... Um, we will start with uh, talking to Martin. So you guys go over to his place, and uh, he's in his, he's actually in his, his yard out there in front of his house, and he looks kind of looks scared. He's like, whoa, who are you guys? And he looks up and sees Eldor and sees how big he is, and he kind of like cowers down a little bit. But he doesn't run away, but he kind of cowers down a little bit. He's like, are you, guys, are you guys here to get me? Are you guys with the city watch or what? I, I didn't do anything. I didn't blow anything up. No, we were just... Wondering if you saw anything, because it blew up right in front of our bar. You're okay. I, I did see it blow up. Uh, I don't know, but it, it really. I saw some stuff, but it really scared me, though. I, I don't know. Um, can you guys give me a persuasion check, please? Whichever one you guys, or both you guys, if you want to. I was gonna say I'll offer him a gold piece if he tells us what he knows. <laughs> okay, then you can. <laughs> Roll with advantage, and then uh, Sako, if you want to also pony up a gold piece. That's a lot of money for this kid. You can get advantage to. I'll just <laughs> he likes take money. a step close to him and uh, tower over him and just say, talk. Give me an intimidation then, please, instead of persuasion. Pretty good one, bib. Eh, she's more smooth than you are, scary, apparently. But still, he's a kid, and he's not really all that, uh, all that hard to convince or scare. So... He's like, oh, thank you. He takes a gold piece from you. And he's like, I, I, I didn't really see much, but one thing I did see is uh, I, I, was, I heard the explosion, and then I ducked behind this rain barrel because I didn't know what was going on. I didn't want to get blown up. And I heard something plop, like like in this barrel and right next to me. Uh, and I heard somebody running on the roof above me. And then so I, I looked in the barrel, and I pulled this out, and he holds out this necklace in his hand towards you guys. And it has, it's a necklace and it has two beads on it still and the clasp is broken on it. 
I'm gonna grab the necklace. He pulls his hand away. He's like, "This is this is mine." He's like, oh. "But I, uh, I'm a salesman." I already gave you a gold piece. What more do you want? I drive a hard bargain, lady. That's how I make it in these mean streets. Uh -huh. Pay me for it. You can have it. And Five. I'm just gonna have ghosts sitting next to me, just staring him down. <laughs> He's just mm, two gold pieces, and I'll sell, sell, I'll sell it to you. He looks over at the cat and kind of looks a little timid. Two gold pieces. Hmm. I think I'm just gonna kind of, since I'm looming over him anyway, I'm just gonna put my big hand on top of his head and just just gently squeeze the top of his head and say, "What?" <laughs> Okay, give me an intimidation with advantage, please. And Ghost is there too, so yeah, definitely advantage. Yeah, that's enough. He's like, okay, okay, jeez, you guys are mean. Here, and he gives it. He gives it over. He just holds it out. So, which one of you guys is gonna grab it? Uh, you can grab it since I grabbed the little gem box or gem bag. All right. Okay. I'm just gonna write that down to make sure we add it to the inventory. I'm just gonna write down the necklace so that way we can remember to add it. Okay, and what did it look like? Uh, it's a necklace and it had it's a, a necklace with beads on it with black beads and the clasp is broken and there's two beads on it still. Uh, and that's it's not really all that remarkable besides that. But, okay. Um, all right. Actually, give me an arcane check if you're gonna feel you know try to really check it out or if you're just kind of looking at it if you want to check it out real quick they'll give me an arcane check okay uh, i'm not very oh well that's better than i thought <laughs> pretty good okay uh i mean you don't know uh for sure exactly what it is but you do feel when you touch the beads that they definitely have some kind of power surging through them seems like a pretty good amount so okay. you're not overly familiar with arcane stuff but you do have some knowledge of it so you can tell that it is magical and uh they they've definitely has some energy going through the beads themselves when you touch the actual necklace part of it and the clasp and everything it just feels normal nothing special okay well my guess would be that he probably threw one of these beads so give it to rival me get close get back to him okay then actually i'll drop that on you um actually there's a thing here too so that yeah, was a good enough roll so I should maybe let double check. Okay, yeah, there's nothing that shouldn't be able to do that. So with that roll, you see that it was um, a, which you know kind of makes sense, a necklace of fireballs, and it still has two charges on it. So, okay, I'll drop that in your inventory. Okay. Yep, and you can see what it is there. It's in your inventory if you want to check it out. So Martim said that he had heard something running around on the rooftop above him when he was hiding behind that barrel after the explosion. Felt or heard something drop into the barrel, pull that necklace out. That is what you gathered from Little Man. Okay, didn't see anything else? No, he didn't see anything else. Because he was just hiding because he was too scared. So just what he found and heard. All right. Well, thanks, kid. I'm gonna hand him four more silver. <clears throat> and just tell him if he hears anything else or sees anything else suspicious, just come find us at the bar. He says, "Cool, thank you." And if I find anything else, I'll I'll make sure I'll bring it to you guys. See if you see if you want to buy it. Sounds good. We sell juice boxes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Uh, AFK, a second. I'll be right back. <clears throat> I'm still up on the roof, but just for analysis, so that I, I, it's a little bit confusing, I suppose. But it sounds like the the, the puppet thing was uh, the marionette thing. He was up on the roof, threw one of these beads at the gnome. Somebody else, presumably you know human, at least humanoid, anyways, in a cloak, went over to the gnome and took something off the body, and then they both ran off. But they were they, well, we don't know what direction the the. Hopefully, I'll find out here when from being up on the roof, but. We don't know if they went the same direction or not, but I mean, that makes it a coordinated effort, basically, is what I'm saying. So the the um, 
puppet obviously was working in league with whoever the human were the, the humanoid was that stole something off of the body and then ran yeah that would be my guess sounds like it although because the one in the cloak the humanoid that stole something off of the gnome was wounded as well I mean, it could have just been an accident. Maybe the uh, throw from... The, well, actually, you know what? Actually, from Eldor's uh, uh, investigation of it, the throw was not good. The aim was not good. So it could have been you know, that the throw was, you know, off, and that's what wounded the uh, the humanoid, and it wasn't supposed to. Probably. My guess is that if he got burnt, there's probably at least some kind of blood trail that ghosts can sniff out. Uh, that's a good idea. <clears throat> So many crying people in this city. <laughs> it's handy that the necklace still has two uh, two beads on it, though, because I mean, you, the, <laughs> the fireball I threw at the were rats was pretty helpful. Take out whole groups of Joffrey. Moves. That's poison, though. Still be interesting to watch him swallow it. <laughs> hey, guys. Yep. Okay. And, uh, oh, when you guys, and you guys are getting ready to leave, and, and Martim says, oh, you know what? I, I'm going to go see... I'm, I'm going to go see if I can find some more items for you guys. I know what I'll do. I know the city watch, he, he, when, when people die, their their bodies get taken to the temple in the north ward. Maybe I'll sneak in there one of these days and see if they have any rings or something on them. Take those and sell them. You just because told us you're going to go commit a crime. <laughs> <laughs> little kid that just, just told us, yeah, I'm going to break into a morgue and steal shit. <laughs> He's like, okay, I'm, just, I'm just a kid. I don't, I don't know what else to do. I just know that's a take stuff off of dead people. I mean, it's like they don't they don't own it anymore, do they? Because they're dead, right? That's how it goes. So, I think if Akasha tells me about this and all the money that she gave to this poor kid, I'm gonna break in and steal it from him later. <laughs> <laughs> steal the money back. Well, you do know where he lives because you guys are out in front of his house. <laughs> uh, you're up on the rooftops, uh, and when you uh, when you take a look, you notice that. Um, See the direction. I'll, I'll have to double check, but uh, you do see. I might have to retcon this later because I'm pretty sure this is the direction that it is. But uh, you notice that. Um, well, I'll tell you what the direction is later. But when you're up on the rooftops, you do see that it looks like um, some stuff was kicked over and stuff, and so it went in a certain direction. So I just say north for now. So you did see uh, that something did go that way on the rooftops. So. Okay. And yeah, again, what I was looking for is so. to see if he was going the same direction that the uh, towards the bent nail, basically. Like, did he did he go towards the same direction as the humanoid that that uh, took something off of the gnome's body? No, that that's definitely. Oh, that's what we'll do. Is just say because again, I just need. I did read it, but I just don't remember everything that I read earlier. So I'll tell you which way he went better later on. But it's not the same way as the bent nail. So okay. uh, the the rooftop, you know. You don't know exactly which way or where he went, but you do see that it's something. You know, there's. Something looks like it did go that way, from what you can tell. Okay. And there's not much else you can tell besides that, but it's a different direction than the bent nail. So. All right, then I'll climb back down. Okay. All right, standing in the road, can go sniff out any blood or anything from the dude that was in the cloak? Let me read up on that. Go ahead and give me an uh, investigation in snows. So with advantage, let me take a look at that. On ghost. Yeah, I'm ghosting. Yeah. Do you have a different track for uh, the investigation? Yeah. The whole city is in mourning over these dumb 11 people that got blown up. Okay, apparently it started raining because that was the next 
audio. Now so. <laughs> <laughs> it's raining, apparently. So, and uh, we'll just say that uh, luckily the rain just happens to magically come in to help put that fire out before it burns down your guys' entire fucking neighborhood. So. Oh, it was still on fire? <laughs> well, I mean, I, you, you would assume that the, you know, the firefighters came and were starting to do all that stuff, but th we'll just say that the rain helped them out. How about that? So. Okay, let's see. None of us have ever heard of, like, a puppet kind of a person before? No, you guys have not uh, seen any of those before. So, again, the Scarecrow was the only closest thing that you guys have been known of to that, like a you know, lifeless object kind of coming to life kind of thing. All right. Okay, and um, give me a second, I, babe. I need to look up and see which direction that is because why she... Okay. Uh, uh... All right, with that one, uh, especially since the rain started, um, the ghost nose doesn't really catch anything from the way that the trying to catch the way that the thief that pocketed the gnome went so not much there and can you can El Dor actually please give me a is, is the memory checks on here 2G or is that just on your game the memory you can, you, on it? you can add it you can add any skills you want basically from the skills page we can all do it at the same time if you guys want uh, from if you, everybody goes to your skills page real quick I'll walk you through how to do it Let me know when you're there. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, bottom right corner, you'll see the little plus minus icon, the square. Click that. Mm -hmm. And then if you're not already, scroll up to the top. You'll see a green plus sign at the top. Click that, and it'll give you a new blank line. Just type in memory. And then in the box for stat, change that to... Uh, shit, do I have memory? I think I have it as intelligence, don't I, G? I believe it's intelligence. All right, so just click the stat until it shows int. Ah, uh, shit. Be careful when you... When, as soon as you click it once, it's going to change the first oh. box, which means it'll probably adjust acrobatics, set acrobatics back to dex. If you accidentally broke it like I did. And then go back down to your memory line and click int until... or click the box still shows int. And don't check the star unless you are going to use one of your skills to... your skill proficiencies for it. <clears throat> I mean, you definitely won't have that right now, but in the future, if you're going to. Thanks, Jay. Yep. Cool. And then when it's all set up, uh, Eldor, give me a memory check, please. Actually, um... Akasha and Rav can too, but Eldor with advantage, please. If you guys want to try, you can. That's rolled two for the advantage thing. That works. Did you want to roll two, babes? Oh, yep. Sorry, I'm just putting thing in ghosts. Oh, yeah, no problem. Thanks. No rush. You can ask okay. ghosts for his memory. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose since you could talk to him. That memory. Yeah, I mean, if you could yeah. talk to him, then it works anyways. So you guys, uh, uh, again, you know, Martim told you guys too. So I'll write that down, little boy's name. Uh, but Martim did tell you guys, and you also knew from, you know, being in town for at least a few months or whatever, you know, maybe longer for some of you guys, that uh, they're the closest place here where bodies are taken, the closest morgue is in the North Ward. Uh, and you do know that... Uh, um, Eldor, when he was there meeting with Sabra and stuff like that, he didn't know that he saw clerics that were heading that way, uh, and they go to the morgue when bodies are brought in to cast a gentle repose on them, which keeps them uh, from decaying, basically, until they can finish autopsies and stuff like that. Uh, and so, um, if you guys went in there, um, actually, you might have it yourself too, Eldor, I'm not really sure, but if you guys are able to kind of get your way in there with the guild because like the order of the gauntlet you know you do have one level of renown with them uh you may be able to tag along with them eldor uh in to where the bodies are and see if you can um use your special skills to 
possibly talk to any of them. So, I was actually going to ask if uh, Eldor had. I, I know he doesn't have to speak with Dead yet because we we talked about it last week, I think. But um, okay, yeah. If if we could get somebody that can speak with Dead and we can talk to the gnome, we might be able to find out at least what he was carrying. That might help us track down what's going on. You guys do uh, well again. Eldor has the one point of renown so far with the uh, Order of the Gauntlet, and again they are already starting to be fond of you guys because you have helped them out once before with that that, that side mission that you guys did. So you might be able to convince one of the clerics heading that way to let you tag along, and maybe they could help you and translate for you or something. Possibly if you convince them or pay them or whatever to do speak with the dead for you. We'll give it a shot, Eldor. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, you guys head back to uh, the, uh, the you know, location or whatever you want to call it, the headquarters of the Order of the Gauntlet. And uh, when you're in there, you guys do see there's sort of some clerics moving around and stuff. Um, and a couple of them uh, say that they got to go take care of some business. So, uh, did you guys want to, you know, check and see if you can, if they're heading that way or whatever, you guys can talk to them if you want to. So, and you, and you met these people like you know once before. You don't know them all that well, but you did meet them once, and they do know who you guys are. So, they say hi when you guys come in. Yeah, just say hello, give them a cordial handshake, so uh, recognize each other. They say good to see you again, Eldor. Hope things are faring well for you. Uh, we uh, have some business. We're going to be busy here for a little while. I'm obviously you must have heard about it because it was right in front of your guys' place. But that fireball that went off, you know, took out 10, 11 people. We're going to be busy tonight, so uh, don't let us stand in your way. I'm kind of curious since that did just happen outside of our bar, wondering uh, maybe we can we can give a hand or maybe come with you guys tonight just to see what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I know you're part of the order, so we can at least get you in, big guy. And they look over at you, Eldor. Uh, your friends, they might have to wait outside. We'll see if they might let them in because, you know, sometimes they'll let uh, people in as long as you're not poking around and messing with anything because sometimes people are curious so not sure about your friends but we should be able to get you in big fella and it would actually be good good training for you if you want to come along we'll show you how it's done and you know and then if you ever want to help in the future you can definitely interested uh, friends uh they'll, they'll keep the, their hands to themselves i'll make sure of it don't make promises for me <laughs> <laughs> and the clerics laugh and say well eh, you never know what happens if somebody else tries to send another fireball we might need you guys to get mean and feisty so uh yeah, we'll head. We're actually heading that way now. If you guys want to come with us, we're going to the North Ward. So, you guys can tag along. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. So you guys go there, and when they show up, there's a couple of guards at the door, and they're like, "Oh, hey guys," because you know they recognize the clerics, and and then they see a they see Eldor, and they're like, um, "Oh, are, are you the the new guy?" They, they told us that they have a, a big oversized Minotaur working with them. You're a Minotaur, right? That's what you are. <laughs> Not quite, but uh, close enough. These are my plus two. <laughs> uh, either way, uh, nice to meet you. And, and they stick their hands out and introduce themselves. And they say, you know, hi, uh, uh, Eldor, we know your name. Uh, plus two. Can we can catch you guys' names? Akasha? Um, I give a fake name. Hang on, I don't have one yet, though. So give me one second to find one. Okay. Just go ahead, you. And, and they're like... Uh, and so, you know, we'll just say that, obviously, you say your fake name, and they're like... <laughs> name is what? Your, your name is Ligma. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, while you guys introduce names, obviously, we'll just say that Rob said his fake name there, but they're like, oh, nice to meet you guys. We're, I'm Terry, and, and this is Barry. We, we, we watch, the, watch the friend here. So, um, so we can let there? those guys... <laughs> They're like, no, we're actually not twins, believe it or not. We're just friends that have very similar names. And so we just like to, you know, make people think that we're brothers. But... And they say, all right, well, we know the Order of the Gauntlet could obviously come in, but uh, I'm not really sure about those guys. Uh, I don't know, the boss might not like it, and Terry and Barry look over at each other. Um, do you guys just want to say anything on your behalf, or just uh, roll a persuasion check and see if you're, or a charisma check or something, and see if you're a charm? Wins them over, just your faces? Um, I'll pretend that the wounded were, uh, or the, the, one of the ones that, uh, that was killed uh, was, you know, a close personal friend or something like that, so try to convince them that way. 
Okay. And uh, and whenever you think of your name, just you, if you want to, you can say it. And if not, you can just say that you know you just came up with a false name. But either way, can you give me a um, um, performance check? All right. I'm not saying anything. So just a charisma check. Uh, yeah. Just um, just do a persuasion. Yeah. Because we'll just say that everybody else talking was persuading for you, and uh, obviously you pass that with flying colors, G. So they're like, "Oh man, I hate it when that kind of stuff happens." You know, Are you sure you're gonna be okay in there see- seeing your friends? You know, dead. Oh, I mean, I'm I'm crushed. Don't get me wrong. I'm all jacked up. They look at you and like, well, dude, we can tell. We're sorry, and they come over and pat you. Like, actually, honestly, come over and like console you and pat you <laughs> on the shoulder. <laughs> I'm just trying not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they say, well, you can at least go in and say your last goodbyes. We're sorry about that, friend. And they're like, and and, and, and the, the, the pretty lady over there with, with the giant cat, they, they can come in too, but tell that cat not to eat any of the bodies because we're, we're going to so get fired if, if, one of the cat, if the cat sees one of the bodies. So. Oh, I'm trying to keep him from gnawing on fingers, so don't worry. Okay. He just All likes right. rats. <laughs> They're like, maybe we should hang him around here. We get rats here sometimes. Man, they come after the bodies and it's terrible. So you guys, they let you guys inside uh, and out on the tables and everything. You guys do see that there is uh, uh, all the people that you did see there. So there was, uh, you know, the old the old lady, the four halflings, the two guys, uh, the one that you know was in him and the other one that was with him. Uh, the pretty much kind of boring half elf male and two females and then there was your guys as a intended well the fireballs intended target uh the gnome so is your show eldor all right well i guess uh, let's all go in and take a look at these bodies then um can we perform any type of checks on them like uh now that they're just there and can kind of get, I guess, a closer look. Is there anything that we? Can... Yeah, yeah. You're you're welcome to take a closer look if you want to, but obviously you can't start like fidgeting with too much stuff because then they're going to get pissed off at you. But yes, you can look a little bit closer and stuff like that. Just don't start like moving stuff or trying to take anything or whatever because they might not like that. You can if you want to, but you're assuming they're not going to like that. So we brought the clerics with us, though, right? Yeah, the cleric should be with yes. us. Yes. Yeah, uh, you guys have um, one of the representatives from the gauntlet with you guys another fellow cleric all right i guess i'll uh motion my hand forward to the cleric and say after you i'll follow you in okay they head in there and he says uh um i I can only do this a couple of times you know uh casting this uh or using my using my uh ability to speak with the deceased it makes me tired if i do it too much I, i can do it a couple of times and i can only do it with one of them so uh choose two that you might want to talk to uh, and then you have to let me know uh, what you want to ask before I before I started because I get entranced and I won't be able to hear you so. I'm sorry that's exhausting but uh, maybe I could share the burden with you maybe sometime you could uh, teach me this and uh, maybe I can assist you for the future yeah, that's what you're here for we'd be happy to have you with us when you're when you grow a little bit more then I'm sure you'll be able to have this uh same ability that I have here because I haven't always had it either and it would be very beneficial because there's just with all the trouble especially with these damn gangs fighting there's just uh, we're stretched thin so we definitely need some more help with this and so we'd be happy to have you along be happy to try to or to show you how to do this so all right uh, let me take a moment just to uh, confer with my, my colleagues here so uh, what would you like to specifically ask uh, which uh, which person well, he said if there, if there are two that we can talk to, he said he can do it twice, right? You can talk to two different people is what that means, yes. All right, then definitely the gnome, of course, but probably the one with the tattoo, the zent with the tattoo. What do you guys think? Yeah, definitely yeah. the gnome. That'll be one of them. Yeah, the other one, though, like the, the mix, there was the old woman, uh, some halflings. Uh, let's see. Uh, the two guys in, in armor, one of them had the zent tattoo, though. Uh, some nobles. Uh, two halfling women, two halfling men. Like, basically, just the, the rest of them seemed pretty nondescript. The only ones that actually stood out to me, at least, were uh, the the guys in leather armor, one of which had a tattoo, so probably the one with the tattoo, and then, of course, the gnome. Okay. And uh, who did you guys want to talk to first? 
Let's say, uh, let's check with the gnome first. Okay. And the cleric says, uh, big guy, since you're on the same, or, you know, arcane kind of level as me, uh, you might be able to communicate with me while I am talking to them. So you might be able to ask him, you know, a question or two, but basically lay out what you want to say and uh, let me know ahead of time before I start. All right. What do you think, guys? Uh, or what you want to ask, basically. What do you think? Uh, we'll ask him pretty much the, the basics. Uh, did you see anything? Who was it? Blah, blah, blah. Type. We need Why to know... coming to the bar? <laughs> yeah, I mean, as the uh, uh, Barnabas told us, he was coming to the bar for something. I mean, he could have just been coming in for drinks, but it's 6 a.m. That seems unlikely. So uh, the questions we need to ask would be, one, who is he? Because if we don't get much information about him, you know, from this, we can potentially research by who he is, why he would be a target. Uh, so who is he? Why would he be a target? Do we have a limited number of questions, GM? I, I think... Five, I think. You know, okay. with this one, I, I'd say if if you guys didn't have a cleric with you, that's part of the order, you would have had a harder time doing this. But I think you can pretty much ask anything you want to. Again, he's not going to remember every single thing because, you know, he's not... You're bringing him back, you know, a soul or whatever, so he's not all there. But you can pretty much ask him whatever you want to. He just might not have answers for everything. So, again, since you guys do have the advantage of being part of the order and having a cleric with you, then I'll say that you guys can basically ask whatever you want. Again, it's just he might not have an answer, but he will answer with whatever he does know. Gotcha. All right, so... What's first, guys? Yeah, so who is he... Uh, why would he be a target? What would it, what would they be taken off of him? Like, did he, was he carrying something valuable? He says, okay, well, yeah, we'll start with that. He says, uh, my name is Dalakar. I'll spell that out for you guys. Sorry, I meant to capitalize that. But he says, my name is Dalakar. Uh, they... What was, what I'm assuming they probably were after was an item, a very powerful item I had on me uh, at the time that I was killed, called the Stone of Galore. I'll spell it out for you. I had that written in my notes somewhere. <laughs> was that the thing that they, the uh, Rainier Never Ember was supposed to have had, or they thought he had it, which is why they kidnapped him? No, the stone is the one that they were going to use to find the money or whatever, right? Okay. So the yeah. money that, that Never Ember's dad hid, they were going to use the stone to find that? Yes, that's okay. what I have in my notes. It sounded familiar, I just couldn't remember what it was. So so he had, this gnome had that, and they stole it from him? He says, yeah, I had the stone on me. The stone can lead does lead, from what I understand, to considerable wealth. Uh, and I actually braved and almost got myself killed, but uh, I took it from Xanathar's guild way down below the city. Oh, so that's why he had the stuff on his sh shoes and stuff then, because he was down there. So he broke into the Xanathar guild and stole it? He says, uh-huh, I was crafty enough. I don't know how the hell I made it through. But I found my way to the Xanathar's Guild, way deep under the city, and I and I found the stone. They were in possession of it. I knew they had it. I took it. I assume they must have found out that I took it, and that's why I'm dead. Did you get hired to take it? Let me see. Or did you just take it for the hell of it? Maybe it's just a greedy gnome. He says, uh... I was uh, I was working for the Open Lord of Waterdeep, um, but uh, but not n not Silverhand. I don't recognize him. I'm talking about Lord Doggold. That that we're never remember. That's who I was. Uh, that's who I was uh, working for. But uh, I can't really say what I was going to do with the stone. I might have might have kept it for myself. But uh, yeah, I was uh, working for Never Ember. Oh, let me spell that name. Sorry. That well, so is that the dad then, right? That's not Rainier. That's not the one that we rescued. It's his dad. Yeah, Rainier is uh, is the first name of the other Never Ember that you met. So yeah, uh, and yeah, but so is and, and his Lord dad? Lord Doggold is his dad. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and then Dalakar says, uh, I I don't I don't recognize Silverhand. L Leryl Silverhand is the Open Lord. I, I still 
recognize Lord Doggo of Never Ember as the, as the open lord of the city. Why were you coming open to lord. the bar? An open lord basically refers to like the mayor kind of thing, you know, highest up in the city, politician kind of thing. He says, oh, the bar, um, you guys, actually, uh, I had heard that there's some pretty, some pretty stout folks around town. Um, and I knew that uh, also you guys had helped Rainier, you know, uh, being, I, I heard about that. And I know, so I know that you guys are strong and uh, I know that I've been, been being trailed and I was hoping that maybe I could leave the stone with you guys. So that way, you know, you guys are tough. And if anybody came for you, you could fight them off. And, and then, you know, they wouldn't be able to track me and stuff. So I, I was hoping for protection. But I got blown. Or, but I, I was on the way there. And I don't know. Just I heard an explosion for a split second. And then now I don't remember anything until sitting here talking to you. I've only got one more question. How about you guys? Be able to get a good description or uh, some information. Oh on shit, the duh. Yeah. Good question, Taco. All right, my question will be: uh, Do you remember anything about the the attacker? Uh, any traits or where it came, where he came from, or the direction he was traveling? Any... I I really don't know. Again, I was going for you guys' place, and uh, I I gotta admit, I was I was walking fast. I was about you know a nice little jog heading towards your guys' place because I've been being trailed and I heard something. I didn't see anything, but I heard something and I turned around, but I didn't I didn't see anything. So I just kept running. I was almost for your guys' place. I thought once I was in the door, I'd be fine. Uh, and then again, I just woke up here. Loud, just for a second, heard a loud explosion and then I'm here. Because if you remember, he had, he was hit in the back, not directly, but he was hit in the back with it. So he didn't see his attacker. All right. Your question, Ralph. My my only last question is: uh, Is Elvis really Elvis. dead? Uh, yeah, he's actually here right now. Can you uh, let me pair of his blue suede shoes. Ooh, I have a question: Has he ever seen an animated marionette before? Like a dude walking around that looks like a marionette without strings? He says, uh, "You know, I." I thought I saw one. I was in um, the dock ward once, and I one of the ships was uh, you know anchored there, and some of the crew was still on it, and they were getting off. I think they were going to head over to Skewer Dragon to to grab a drink, and I saw something moving, uh, and it moved weird. I mean, I've never seen anything move like that before. It wasn't human. It was very lanky, very very odd. You know, so either somebody that was really stiff and their skin didn't look like skin that looked you know kind of hard and smooth uh, and they moved really weird so that's i don't know if that's what you're talking about but on a ship one time otherwise no i've, I've never seen any walking puppets before that's kind of weird right, and the crew went to where the crew they, from the ship they they went to drink at the skewer dragon they were docking and they were going to drink at the skewer dragon i mean this was you know probably but I, I guess I don't know how long I've been dead, but bef at least before I died, this, this was like, you know, a few weeks or a month or so before I died. But I have seen that, yeah. I thought that was kind of odd. I just thought maybe I was crazy. Kind of just mostly tried to forget it, you know? I just thought maybe I had one too many ales myself. So. Do you remember the name of the ship? Uh, hang on, give me a second. He's got to check his notes. Remember. Yeah. The dead gnome has to go back and read his book real quick. See his notes. It was, uh, started with an H. Uh, Hell, uh, Hall, Hell, Heck, Hell, Hellraiser. That was the name of it. It was written on the side. It's called Hellraiser. Which I thought was kind of a strange name for a ship, but that's what I remember seeing on the side of it. I don't have any more questions. He says, all right, then I will walk towards the light, and I'm going to go sit on a cloud and play a harp for a while. See ya. See ya.
<laughs> Dead. <laughs> okay. Um, then for for the other one, then like, do you guys have any any questions that wouldn't be for? I guess any other questions that wouldn't be for the uh, the guy with the tattoo. <laughs> Did you have any more gnome questions before he lays himself to rest permanently? I don't. No. no. All right. Then he says, all right, well, nice to talk to somebody again one more time before I go. I guess I'll see where this leads. And then the cleric breaks the concentration, and he is just there again. He was laying lifeless the entire time anyway, of course, but the cleric was translating what he was saying. Although Eldor was picking up a little bit of it here and there small little pieces I'm curious if the guy with the tattoo was involved though because the the puppet threw the, the fireball the aim was bad ended up wounding the one that got away like it could he could have the one that got away the one that did, picked it up and ran he could have been with the with the guy with the tattoo like they all could have like the three of them because they were one to the tattoo one all to that together. One. yeah they could have all been together and he just he was the one that survived basically because they were chasing, like he, the, the gnome said he knew he was being trailed, so they were chasing him anyway. You know, probably would have stolen it from him, but I, I still don't know why the you know puppets involved unless he's you know connected somehow. But anyway, I, I think that's probably our best one to talk to since we have one left. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah. See how the correlation is because he's obviously part of the group. It seems like he could be at least, but I mean, of the rest, he seems like the only one that potentially could have some information because we knew the gnome was being trailed, and we know that the uh, the Zents and the Xanathar Guild don't get along, of course. So they you know they could have been trying to steal it from him after he stole it from the Xanathar Guild. Yeah, and when we found Rainier, the building had a black wing snake on it. Yeah, it's a Zent. It was a, it was a Zentarum hideout, and that's who these that's who this guy that's a tattoo that this guy has is from them. And they were, remember when we were there, they were being attacked by the Kenku. The Kenku were from the Xanathar Guild. Yeah. Okay, so talking to the tattooed man? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so same thing. Uh, the cleric starts, murmurs a few words and puts his hand on the corpse of the tattooed man. Uh, and again, um, if, when, he, when you concentrate Eldor, you can kind of catch a few words here and there, too, of what is going on here. Uh, and it, the cleric looks up at Shu and just kind of, you know, nods a little bit, waiting for questions. Yeah, first things first, I'll, uh, I'll probably ask him the same general questions just to start it off. Uh, did you see anything? Uh, what, uh, what happened that says uh um I actually he says well I'll, I'll tell you um uh, we were actually pursuing a gnome and we were pretty close to him uh, a little gnome in a black cloak he was running towards he looked like he was running towards that tavern that uh that we were right in front of um and we were paid to pursue him and then things I was we were going after him running after him and uh I, I heard an explosion and then I was thrown at, and I remember when I was you know flying through the air uh, I looked up and I I thought I saw some kind of weird shambly odd human thing Not, it couldn't have been a man up on the roof uh, and then I hit the wall and, and that was it now I'm here talking to you guys you said we who were you with I had another another guy with me um I'm assuming he probably died with it too. Uh, dressed similarly to me, he had a sword on him, leather armor. He was with me. Just one guy with you? There was just one guy with me. Uh, my name is uh, my name is Bashek, and my friend Wern was with me. We were we were after Dalakar, that gnome. He had something we wanted. I'll type their names out. Well, so much for that. I had a good theory. Uh, I guess we need to know who he was working for. Like, if, he, if he's chasing this gnome before, who? Who's paying him, or who's uh, yeah. who told you to chase him? Who told you to get that? He says... Uh, hold on, I'm going to type out the other guy's name, and then he says the name of the 
person that paid them, uh, him and his friend. So you're talking to Bashak Ortalis and his friend is Warren Mockrave. They were hired by Erstal Floxen to. Oh, I'm typing that out. Hired by Erstal Floxen to track the, do the gnome Dalakar uh, and get this stone. And apparently, I don't know what the hell it's for, but this stone is a. Uh, really wanted by Erstal, and he paid us well to go and try to get it from the gnome. We just about had the gnome, and then again, got blown to bits. Where could we find Erstal? Uh, I... You know, I'm, I'm, I know he wasn't far away. He was actually uh, standing around, hoping to... He was staying behind us because he didn't want... Dalakar to know that he was there, but he was tracking us as well, too. He was with us, just staying behind to see what was going on. We were actually paid to do the dirty work, so... Okay, so we're we're still... Cloak? Yeah, it sounds like that's who he was. He says, um, Erstol, uh, he lives... We know he lives at Gralhund Villa. We've seen him there before. That's actually where we went to meet with him about, uh, this particular job. But he was trailing us. I have no idea if he was hit in the blast, if he ran off, if the City Watch... I'm assuming the City Watch had to come after that if they arrested him. Couldn't tell you. But he wasn't too far behind us, though. He was trailing us and watching the entire thing. Because he, he didn't trust us. I'm assuming he didn't trust us with that stone. That's why he was trailing, so he could, uh, you know, grab it from us And as soon as uh, we, gra we found it, so we don't get a chance to run off with it. Well, can't think of anything else. It's pretty much uh, everything. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like, it, I mean, he potentially, this Erstal guy, he could have even potentially uh, been invo involved with or even hired the um, the uh, puppet to blow them all up, including these guys, so that these guys wouldn't be witnesses, maybe. And yeah. then he, you know, got wounded in it, but still, you know, stumbled his way in, grabbed the, the uh, Stone of Galore, and then ran off with it. Yeah, any other questions for the for the dead guy? I don't think so. I think I'm good with this one. Okay. And he says, uh, uh, all right, well, and I was talking to you guys, and he says, you know, come to think of it, that thing that I saw up on the roof, it kind of looks like those, uh, uh, on the Day of Wonders parade, they have these weird creatures that march in the parade, and they're, and they're not humans they're controlled by something it kind of looked like one of those things but uh i've never known those things to ever be violent or even have independent thoughts really they're just controlled by their masters but i think i have seen those things but it's kind of what it looked like again i didn't get a very good look when i was flying through the air but it's kind of what it looked like though hmm. and then that is it unless you guys have any more questions for him i don't Okay. I think that's it. Well, with what we've learned, then, I mean, we can go to to Growlhund Villa to, to go look for for Erstal here. Uh, we know that if that's him, he went towards the bent nail. We could check out there to see if anybody you know watched him run by. Although that's you know kind of ways away in town now, since we went all the way to the to the north ward where the uh, morgue is. Oh, and what do you uh, think? So I was just going to say, I was just reading this part too. Again, I already read this, but I forgot some of it. Uh, before, um, what that was in, before Bashik is done with the cleric when he was talking about that parade, he says that uh, the Day of Wonders parade happens in the fall. So it's, he says, we know it's going to be it's happening anytime. Uh, I don't know how long I've been passed away, but I know it was only uh, not, not far away from time to go before I passed away and uh, the local temple of Gond here, I'll spell it out for you they always sponsor the parade and they're the ones that uh, have those uh, weird looking puppet kind of creature things that march in the parade Wanna go there? 
go to the temple, see if we can find out, you know, if they have one that went rogue and is somehow sentient or something. Stolen or something, or yeah. stolen under control. There, top of the gun. Okay. Want to head out that way, then? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. Um, you guys would uh, know this for just from being in town, and if not, you could ask anybody anyway. Uh, but the temple is in the Sea Ward. It's on the corner of Sea Watch Street and Shark Street in the Sea Ward. So heading that way? Yeah, let's go check out yeah. the temple. Okay. And uh, the other, it's, it's the Temple of Gone, but it's also known as the House of Inspired Hands. Let me put that up there for you. Okay, and when you guys get there, uh, the, the front of the building, when you see it, excuse me, it looks like a mix of like a temple and a workshop, kind of. And uh, on the front of it, there's a big symbol of a, a big old like cog, like a wheel cog um, with four big spokes on it. Uh, and it's, you know, definitely right there, like on the front door and everything. And then up on the up on the rooftop, you guys see there's a... Uh, that what looks like a person standing up there on the rooftop and it like sticks its arm out uh, towards you guys and then you see this little metal well what you would assume is metal because it shines in the sun uh flying at you guys so can all three of you guys give me a dexterity check please or save actually sorry all Do I need to do one for Ghost? Uh, is it, I'm assuming he's walking close to you guys, right? Yeah. Because yes, if so. Yeah. Okay, those are all yeah, those are all good enough. Uh, so again, you see this uh, humanoid figure up on the top of the roof over there. Oh, it sticks didn't. its arm out. Oh, so and... it was a shadow? No. Oh. Uh, yeah, can you... When you get a second there, Eldor, Eldor give sorry. me a deck save, please. Um, oh no, he did. It's right there. I'm sorry. Yeah. It was in. Yep, it's right there. I'm sorry. Yep, all you guys. Oh yeah, you're fine. So uh, this thing, this metal thing, comes flying at you guys, and you guys all are able to dodge out of the way, and it smashes into the ground, kind of not too far away from where you guys were. And then, uh, did you guys? Where are you guys looking now? Are you guys gonna look at that, or are you looking up at the roof, or what? Because this thing was coming at up. you. It missed. So, okay. I want to see where it's coming from. I think I'm lagging. I don't see the or the fantasy grounds part of it because I see my ASDF, but I didn't see the Eldor roll. Not that it matters. I just didn't see one. Okay. I rolled mine in the tower, so I don't know if you see that. Okay. Yeah. If it was tower, then it would have been uh, it would have been a shadow die. I wouldn't have seen the the result of it. That makes sense. Yeah, it was in the tower. I just wasn't paying attention there at first. So, yep, but everybody was good, though. So, uh, Eldor, when you look up, um, you don't see a whole lot, but you see it move back a little bit, the creature, uh, and you do see that it moves in kind of, like, again, in, in an odd way, kind of shambling kind of way, uh, and then you see it, like, it went downstairs or fell in a hole or something like that. Like, it just drops. Like, you know, you don't see it anymore. So, not from walking back, but going down is what you would assume. Did it throw this thing at us? Whatever this thing is? It stuck its arm out and this thing came flying at you. It's got and fucking so, gun arms? It's a Mega Man? The way, the, way that it, the way that it moved, it was not a projectile. Uh, this thing was moving on its own towards you. So, Is it near enough that we can pick it up and look at it? Like you said, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because it, it smashed into the ground behind you guys. So go ahead and anybody that wants to look at it, give me an investigation, please. And you said the symbol for this temple is a wheel with spokes, right? Yeah, it's a it's a cog with four spokes. All right. Well, one of the guys in that warehouse had that same tattoo. Uh, that one was definitely a wheel with ten spokes, and a cog. I'm thinking like a engineering style gear, right? Yes. Because that the wheel with ten spokes is the uh, we found out later was a Xanathar Guild uh, symbol. But that was like it was a black star wheel with ten spokes. And this is it the same symbol, G? No. Okay. 
But that is good thinking, though. Because when I first saw this, I was like, is that the same thing? And then I read further, and I was like, no, it's not. Because, yeah, the other one had ten spokes, and, and this one... Uh, the other one was, like, more of a circle with ten spokes, and this one's like a toothed cog. So, like a like a mechanical wheel kind of thing. You know, like a like a like giant a clock tower, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, a gear kind of thing. So, yeah. Okay, and when you guys... Yeah, even with those rolls, there's not really too much to miss, especially when Akasha checks it out. Uh, it's it's pretty easy to notice that it's his uh, bird, and it's made out of metal. And when you saw it moving, it looked like it wasn't actually thrown, because it didn't just fly in the same pattern and fall down. It looked like it was moving on its own towards you guys. But now it's not moving at all, because it got pretty beat up when it fell, or when it crashed into the ground behind you guys. So he was on a kamikaze mission. But... This is a metal guy that when he barks, he spits birds at us. That's right. <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, careful, Esther. You okay, girl? You okay? Well, let's go. I mean, That's we need to chase after the, the guy that ran, right? Yeah. We're going to split up or just uh, stick together? Uh, are there, like, okay. I didn't fully grasp, I guess, where he ran. Is there like a, you know, a front door that he could, like, do we need to cover exits that he could try to run out of? Or do we all just chase after him? Um, the, the only way that you guys can get in from where you're at is through the front door. He was on the roof. He moved back a few steps, but Eldor could still see him. And then his head just popped out of sight. So, and not, like, instantly popped out of sight. So Eldor would assume that he went down instead of moving farther back away from where you guys were and the roof blocking it, you know, the wall blocking it, so. Went down and in, like, stairs. inside of the house, or down. inside the, the place? Or a, yeah, some kind of stairs or some kind of, a, you know, emergency hatch or whatever. So, like, down into the building is what she would assume, because he was on the roof. Yeah, it's Russian side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, it's daytime. So uh, this place is actually like there's people in there and everything. So you guys head inside. Uh, did you walk inside or are you guys running inside? Kick the door down, start screaming. <laughs> Everybody Hell get yeah. down. Somebody <laughs> threw somebody threw a metal bird at us and I'm pissed. <laughs> so you guys go in there and you guys go in there and you're like uh, obviously frustrated and everything. And they're like, you know, and there's uh, some acolytes out there and stuff in the temple, you know, like a. Uh, the monks or whatever that you would say that were there and they're like what bird oh god damn it hang on and they walk off so let's see read up a little bit more here and when you guys are standing there you see uh in this hall that you guys are standing on there's just um, a bunch of pedal stools they're really really nice marble pedestals about a couple dozen of them and they have these uh, little inventions and stuff on them like little mechanical stuff kind of similar to that bird that you guys saw uh looks like um like art projects in a way kind of thing but you see a few different things like there's one that's like a little clock tower and like it buzzes and like makes noise and stuff so it's like a little working scale model of a clock tower you see one that's like a little flying machine you see one that looks like it's a giant uh, and these are all like little you know metal and made out of metal and wood and stuff and one of them looks like a, a dragon turtle and stuff so it's just like works of art but like they actually move kind of thing so Mechanical stuff similar to that bird that you saw. So you guys are checking that out, and then it's like an automaton type of thing here. Yeah, because like, and all the little things are actually moving too, like on the pedestal. Like again, the clock tower, the hands move on the clock, and you know, every minute or so, like it starts to chime and stuff. And so all these things are, they're all functional, moving around and stuff like that. So, like not falling off their thing, but little moving parts on them. And then a second later, you see a, um, well, I'm just going to leave it at I said I wasn't going to do this, but I don't feel like changing it. Uh, you see a, uh, a creature that looks like a human-dragon mix, like taller than a human, but not like obviously a full-size dragon, walking on two legs, you know, uh, looking at its eyes, and you know, it looks like it's uh, totally salient and everything like that, and it's a uh, bronze color. It's a dragon board? Cheap. Yeah. And she walks out and she says, uh, Hi, my name is uh, Valetta. I, m my acolytes here told me that you were attacked by a mechanical bird. Is that correct? Yeah, somebody up on the roof threw 
or I don't know, I don't know if it was throwing is quite the, the right verb here, but uh, uh, launched this this little bird. I'll just show it to him, uh, show it to her, uh, at us, and Will then ran out? away. She says, when you hold it out, she looks at it and says, eh, Nim, I knew it. Hang on, let me see if I can find a little image of a dragonborn. I'm sure you've all seen him, but... You said Valletta was her name? Yep, let me type that out. V-A-L-E-T-T-A. -T -T I'll type it out. She says, yeah, Valletta, and she said, oh, that's Nim. Um, not sure what it thinks it's doing. It's not supposed to be attacking people, so I'm going to go find out what's going on. Uh, give me just one second, and you guys can come with me if you want to, see if we can find out what the heck is going on here. Sure. She said so, again, like in a yeah, H, H, like the secret of. No H. Okay. And uh, again, minus all the weapons and stuff like that, but she is a, a bronze, a dragonborn of bronze dragon ancestry, so wearing robes and stuff like that. And she says, "Okay, this way," and so she leads you up to the roof. Let me read on here a little bit more, but she takes you guys up to the roof where she knows Nim is supposed to be, so. And she says, um, d when you saw this bird coming at you, did, did you see anything else? Did you see any other uh, creatures or anything? No, did we? Just the marionette just thing. One, the marionette. So there was a puppet looking thing? Was it? Yeah, okay, that's that's definitely got to be Nim then. So, yep, we're going to go up that way. And she leads you up there. And when you guys are on the way up there, she says, Yeah, that's Nim. Uh, they're, we call them Nimble Rites. Uh, they were uh, gifted to us by... Uh, they were a gift by uh, a Lantanese wizard. And I have no idea, and, and her, her, its name is Nim, this one that we have here, and they, they don't typically, they're not supposed to have um, really much artificial intelligence, they're supposed to just do what we say, so I have no idea what's going on here, so, but throwing that bird at you. You guys are heading up a spiral, a spiral staircase, and you're going up into the attic of the place. And when you guys get there, though, you see that there's a door uh, on the... And, well, the door to Nim's room is, uh, has a lock on it, but when Valletta looks at the lock, she shakes her head and sighs out loud. She's like, Nim put a different lock on the door. God damn it, this isn't the one that's supposed to be here. Hang on. And she looks around. I got a, she doesn't... I got a boot that solves lock picks. Lock picking problems. I also have thieves' tools. I could pick she, it. She says, eh. Boots, I appreciate, but, uh, you know, I don't want to have to fix my place up if we break the door down there. Yeah, so, how about the, the thieves' tools? If, if you guys, this looks like a pretty sturdy lock, but if you guys can get it open without breaking it, maybe we can talk to Nim and see what the heck is going on here. Just please don't break the door down. That I can't allow. So, if you want to, you can try to pick it, but if you try to smash it, they're going to get mad at you. So, you can try, but it might not go over well for you. Uh, sleight of hand, right? Um... If you're proficient with thieves' tools, then it'll be well. Dexterity basically, check? it's going to be a dex check plus your proficiency if you're proficient with it. Okay. I'm proficient in thieves' tools and I'm proficient with sleight of hand. Uh, then you wouldn't get both, but if you just did sleight of hand, it would be the same result. Okay. Yeah, so I guess either one, huh? Well, I mean, it's the same thing. It's basically <laughs> it would be your dex plus your proficiency plus your uh, dex modifier. <laughs> okay. And. Uh... <laughs> You're actually really lucky, by the way, there, honey, because that was actually a very high DC on that. So you're lucky. You stick your tools in there. You start, you know, moving it left to right, digging it in and, you know, using the other one to kind of try to push the tumbler over and everything. And you hear it. You hear a little uh, clicking sound and uh, the latch on the lock opens up. So just out of curiosity, what was the DC? 20. 
Oh. So. You had to roll a 14 or higher. So you had like a 70-ish percent chance of failure. Well, you, you you have a good modifier on that, though, too. So, especially at this level, I think. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, says her modifier is 6, so she would have had to roll a 14 or higher. Still, though, that would have been a, it's a pretty tough roll, though. So, yeah. good thing. Because if not, then you guys would have had to try to figure out something else. Which, I mean, there's other stuff to do, but I'm sure this will make it easier. So that was really nice, though. But, yep, it um, the latch, excuse me, uh, opens up. And, um, or the lock opens up, so did you guys want to open the door or what? Valetta's like, hang on. And then she, like, actually just moves in front of you guys and takes the lock off. Opens up the door and says, Nim, what the hell do you think you're doing? And you guys look over and you see Nim. Let me see if there's a... Might be. I'm going to see if there's a little image for Nim. Okay. Uh, this is not Nim exactly, but these are the Nimble Right puppet kind of things that uh, uh, Valetta was telling you guys about. That was a gift from the Lantanese wizard. Do they all have the mustache and beard? <laughs> and the jaunty yeah. hat. Yeah. So again, they don't all have the uh, Frenchman looking shit going on, but constructs of, you know, wood, metal, both. I think they're supposed to be mostly metal, but metal constructs that are alive, but well, animated, but not alive. Well, not that you know of. So, and again, they're not supposed to really be doing much on their own, so that's why it's a little bit odd here. So, and I'm gonna, when, uh, uh, go, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. When Valletta says, Nim, what the hell do you think you're doing? Nim looks up and starts doing sign language. Like, so, um, you're guessing Nim probably can't talk, but Nim did understand, seems to understand what Valletta said because he, she, it, you know, hangs its head down a little bit and then starts doing the sign language to talk to Valletta a little bit. So what were you going to say, G? Uh, I'm going to, taking my, before, actually, as, as uh, Akasha was opening the door, I was taking my spear out and screwing it back together. Um, and I'll just let Valletta know that uh, uh, your friend, your, your robot friend here uh, killed 11 people outside of our bar. So we kind of need to deal with this. Wait a minute. Hang on here, N Nim. What do you mean? Did you leave? And then, you know, Nim starts moving its hands around and stuff. So I'm like, which, did you go to a bar and you hurt people? Why, why would, did you hurt people? And then, you know, it's talking and stuff. So hang on, let me read here for a second. So they are communicating to one another. Again, Nim can understand the language, but doesn't seem to be able to speak back. So it's using a sign language that Valletta can understand, which you guys don't. While they're communicating back and forth, is there a window or anything? Is there another way that he got into this room that wasn't through that door? Oh, hang on, I'll have to look and see if there's any description on that. Give me one second here, G. It doesn't matter. I'm just basically if there is, if there's a window or something, I'm moving in front of it to block him so that he can't get out without going through us. Oh, by the way, I gave the necklace of fireballs to Rev, so I don't have that anymore. Okay. Uh, um, all right, um, when you look around, I'll double check, but I'm almost definite that uh, when you look around, you do see a hatch in the ceiling, and you would assume that's what Eldor saw when the construct ducked like you know fell down kind of thing so it looks like there's the door in that you went through when you when Nakasha picked the lock and there's a hatch that goes up to you would assume the roof in, in the ceiling so. all right i'm gonna i'm gonna at least stand beneath the hatch then so that he can't get up to it and be out of my reach so that i can hit him if i need to okay and when you're walking over by nim <laughs> it keeps an eye on you but obviously you're not like doing anything so she's looking at you but still just goes back to Nim, just you know, paying attention to where you had moved to. Yeah, I mean, he not only did he, he blew up, you know, eleven people, but he did attack us when we tried to come in here for no reason. He doesn't know who we are, presumably, and he still tried to Valetta. attack us. Valletta says Nim didn't do it, but Nim did do something that she wasn't supposed to do. Um, Nim says that uh, it she had um, built another another nimble right like her to keep her company and that that one ran off about a month ago because it, it just got scared and it ran away and nim hasn't seen it in about a month or so and uh nim's been here the entire time i can even account to that because you know she she can't really get down from the roof we just like to 
be able to let her get up there and look around and stuff. And so she can't get down from there, and she didn't go through the temple, so I really don't think it's her. But uh, she said she built another one when she wasn't supposed to, and that one's been running around loose for about a month. So maybe that's the one that attacked your friends. Even if that's the case, why is she throwing birds at people? She waits a second. She looks over at Nim and says Nim. And then, you know, Nim starts gesturing again. Give me a second here. Okay, but Letta says, well, Nim, Nim says that she got scared. She didn't know uh, if, you know, if that was the other construct coming at her. And, and she just saw one of you guys and just launched the bird. And, and then when it was already in, in the air, she knew that she had done wrong. And she's she, sorry. She just got scared. She really didn't mean to try to hurt anybody. So. This all sounds pretty fishy. Just a coincidence that, that she convenient. built yeah, that she built a different one. She was definitely up on the roof, so she got out of here, even if it was just two of the roof. The other one was found or seen on a roof. Valetta says, yeah, well, we have this hatch there on purpose. That way Nim can go up to the roof and, you know, look around. Yeah, and throw stuff. birds at innocent bystanders, yeah. Yeah, and she's not supposed to do that. By the way, Nim, uh, you're in trouble. You can't build anything anymore. And Valetta you know, calls for some of the other acolytes and they come into Nim's room and they start taking away all the tools and there was some other stuff that Nim had been building too, other like little uh, constructs and stuff, you know, similar More to the murderous and, robots. Yeah, so like, you know, there's different animal looking ones and, and stuff like that and uh, you don't see you no know, humanoid looking ones but there are different like animal looking ones and some stuff too, like, you know, different shaped balls and, and stuff like that, uh, mechanical stuff that are all part way done. And the acolytes come in and take all the tools that Nim was using to build that and take away all of the creations that Nim made to. And Nim just sticks her hands out and then Valetta points at her and says, don't move, Nim. You stay there. And Nim just hangs her head and looks all sad. And then I'm going to get, like, I want to get ahead. Nim's attention. And then without like, basically, I, I don't know these, does it have like eyes? I mean, the robot does, but like. Like does does the eyes react, or is there any way to tell if uh, if this thing reacts beyond its oh, it, it, Yeah, it it's kind of has gestures. I mean, it doesn't actually have eyes and stuff like that. But again, it's like again, it was hanging its head. It was sticking its hands out. Like you know, don't take my stuff. So it does have gestures and stuff like that. So you might not. It wouldn't be able to like wink or something that minute. But it okay. does have humanoid gestures. Then what I want to do. It seems to understand common language that you're speaking. Okay. So. Then what I want to do is get pretty close to its face, um, and then just just very intently uh, watching for a reaction. I'm going to pull out the necklace that uh, Akasha gave me to see if there's any recognition. Okay. She's she's looking at you, and then when you pull the necklace out, do you hold it out or anything, or just start to pull yeah, it out? Yeah, no, I hold I hold it out in front of her. I hold it out in front of her and ask her, do you do you recognize this? She looks at it and she sh she shakes her head, and then she's. She, what, did you actually ask her if she recognized yeah. it? Did you just say that like quietly or whatever? Yeah. She just shakes her head. I just rolled an insight check. Do I believe her or not? Okay, that's a good insight check. Um, yes, you do. I mean, she seems honest, and she seems like, especially now that she had all of her stuff taken away, it seems like all the fight that she had in her was taken out. She really doesn't seem like she recognizes that necklace. Well, this here, whether you recognize it or not, is what your construct with the thing you made used to murder 11 people. And she hangs her head again. And Valetta's like, what is that? And she's like, can I, may I see that a little bit closer? You don't have to hand it, I just want to see it. And Valetta asks if she, if she can look at the necklace. Yeah, I mean, I'll hold it. She can, she can hold on to it, I don't care. Okay, so she takes it and she's like, "I can feel the energy in this. Uh, what, whatever. If if Nim's creation used this thing, then uh, I don't really know how it how it got that you know that smart. They use tools, but they don't really know of arcane things. And and this item's arcane for sure. Uh, if you throw one of these beads, it's going to cause a big fireball type explosion. Each one does. Very powerful. 
Yeah, I, I make similar devices, just not of the arcane sort. But uh, I mean, whether the construct knew what it was doing or not, it still ended up killing eleven people. And she's like, "That's I, I can't believe this, Nim. Oh, man, I just you're you're so on restriction." And Nim waves waves her hands up for a second, and then she points over uh, at an area, and, and she walks over there and she grabs grabs this item out for you guys, and she holds it up to you guys, not to Valletta, but to you guys, and then Valletta still says, what is that? And she looks at it first, and then she looks at it, and she says, oh, okay. Um, actually, yeah, this might help you guys. And she says, this is what Nim holds out. And Valletta says, this thing, if you use it near any of the nimble rites, at least we found with, with Nim and the other ones that we've come across, uh, that they this thing will buzz and, and detect basically if you were close to a construct. They're pretty good at hiding themselves sometimes too. If you watch them move, then yeah, they're you know you you can know that they're not regular people. But when they're just hidden and close, standing in crowds, they're hard to detect sometimes. Uh, this thing will give you a. Uh, give you a notification if you get close to a, uh, a nimble right. If you're within, I think it's roughly 500 feet is what I was told. I mean, that's handy and all, but I mean, let's, let's do some, some quick analysis here. Your, your pet, uh, created its own pet and that murdered 11 people. And your, your response to that is here, you go find them and Nim, you're grounded. She murdered 11 people. Like, this is kind of on your shoulders, not ours. Like, I, I would expect a little better help than just, you know, go find them, here you go. She says, uh, oh, don't worry, we're going to be doing our own investigations, too. Of, of course, we're going to try to find out. We can't can't let this thing get out because we're known for having these things. And uh, even if this wasn't one that, you know, we wanted to be out, it's, it's still our responsibility. So we are absolutely going to be looking for it. But, uh, you know, we have to get everything organized, and I'm sure you guys can sneak around a little bit quicker than we can and besides the nimble rights know what every single acolyte looks like they'll see us coming from a long way away and try to hide still sounds fishy to me what do you guys think kind of yeah this little uh divining rod just might be a um, distraction yeah. if nim's not able to get out how did her creation get out without you guys noticing she says, Nim? And Nim says, Nim, you know, starts, not says, but starts moving her hands and stuff like that. And says, uh, it jumped off the roof. So, apparently, that one must be uh, sturdier than the than Nim herself. So, jumped oh, off that's the roof, all climbed onto another area. And, yeah. Just because she wouldn't be able to make the fall. And this one apparently could make the fall. So, because she's not really all that agile either so she wouldn't be able to roll herself up or whatever and she would land on a limb and smash it off or whatever so you're assuming this other one was created even better so and Nim you know and Nim uh, does ocean and say that yeah she this thing is more um, physically capable than she is so well and 500 then, feet isn't that big of a an area when we're talking a city like, I don't, I don't know how this is really going to help us that much until we have an idea of where it went to. And even then, like, even finding that, I don't know that that will help all that much either, other than if we go to the, uh, what was it called? The, let me scroll up here. Growlhorn Villa and look there. Plus one was seen a couple weeks ago at the docks. You, oh, you show. mean where the, where the ship was? Yeah. Mm, so I'm assuming true. it would be that one. And uh, Valletta says, uh, yeah, I know um, there's a, a ship in the dock. I think there's actually a couple ships in the dock that I've seen uh, one or two Nimble rights on before. Uh, the Hellraiser and the uh, Heartbreaker. I've, I've seen I've seen Nimble rights on both of those ships, actually. And they are commonly uh, docked over Hellraiser. in the dock ward. So, yeah, the Hellraiser and the Heartbreaker. And they are commonly over in the dock ward because the crew likes to stop for a drink at uh, the Skewer Dragon on a pretty regular basis. And she says, uh, oh, and also, I mean, since we are randomly asking you to go take care of our problems, 
we can give you give you a little bit of money for your troubles. I can offer you 500 gold pieces each if you bring back uh, the nimble ride itself or pieces of it and prove that it's you know not going to blow anybody else up anymore. So each 500 gold pieces each. Ooh. Considering that we're basically, by your description here, kind of sweeping murder under the rug, 500 seems a little bit on the cheap side. <laughs> she says, uh, "Well, I don't know. I might be able to get, might be able to get more for you. I'll, I'll see what I can do, but I can promise you at least that." Well, what do you guys yes. think then? Let's take it. We gotta check out that uh, hell, hell razor. Well, if we head to the dock ward, I mean, they're they're on those two ships, and most of the crew apparently go to the Skewer Dragon anyway, so we could check there too. Um, but I mean, that whole area, if we're just kind of walking around with the uh, uh, with the majig, the detector going off, and just get a ping, then we can go look, you know, to see whatever uh, nimble right there around there. See if yeah, we might find one that's uh, out of control. I'm going to ask Nim if there's any defining marks on the one that she made. So that way we can tell the difference between that and others. She says that the one that she made, uh, she messed it up when she was doing some soldering and stuff on it. So, like, they don't have eyes, but if it did, it would only have one eye. Like, it was, um, she messed up on the cavity when she was making the eye, so she just kind of filled, filled it in a little bit so it almost would look like somebody that had, like, you know, a missing eye with a scar tissue and stuff over it so it's essentially a one-eyed quote-unquote nimble right even though they don't actually have eyes so okay. and apparently it has a penchant for jewelry explosive jewelry mm -hmm. maybe you could take one of those beads and stick it in inside then it would look really cool and then we like can bring back the parts off. and get our 500 gold each hell yeah then it'll steal a plane we can fly it into a tower cool <laughs> So you guys do have the uh, the detector thing, the odd looking machine that Nim held out that finds the other nimble rights who wants to take it. Um, I, I, I said I can put it in the party inventory, it doesn't really matter. But if anybody wants it directly, just in case I mean I'm assuming you guys are not gonna split up, but does anybody want to carry it in specific or just say it's party inventory? I could probably just take it since uh, I'm kind of pack mule, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Stick it, stick it out of your backpack so the little umbrella sticking up. <laughs> I'll just go yeah, right over here. Look like a mixed drink. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. There you go. Nimble right detector in your items there, Sucko. Okay. All right, then I guess we help or we uh, thank Valletta and maybe head off towards the dock ward. Yeah, yeah let's wait for the uh, the time where most sailors are at the bar drinking, then jump on the ship. Well, 500 feet is a long enough range that if we're just walking along the dock ward, we should get a couple of pings, especially if they're on the ships. Like, that'll definitely be close enough to be able to get it from the ship itself if we're just on the street. You know, okay. I had a horrible idea if we just kill one of them and make it look like the other one. I'm gonna go. This is their uh, problem, anyways. We're, we're, like we're solving a problem for them. They they created this murderous thing, and their best answer is, uh, "Well, you guys go find it." Yeah. Um. Oh, and then uh, while you guys are sitting there talking amongst yourselves, Valletta says, "Oh yeah, something else too," because Nim was you know, talking to her with her hands and stuff again. And she says something else. We can, uh, some things that might help sweeten the pot when it comes to finding this rogue nimble, right? We do have a couple of interesting items. Um, you guys are each free uh, to take one if you guys, you know, finish the job and bring back proof of its uh, destruction or, you know, bring it back alive, one of the two. We don't care, alive or dead. Um, but there's a few different items that you guys might like. And so she tells you about what they are. Let me tell you here. Uh, here's a good one. Um, this is one that would be good for um, uh, the Empress campaign for Sarah. That'd be funny. Stilts. And so you can <laughs> use stilts. They're collapsible, too, so they don't have to be long the entire time. Collapsible stilts that you can ride, uh, you know, walk on. Um, and while you're wearing them, you can be anywhere from two to five feet taller, depending on how far you extend them, because they're adjustable. So if you guys want to look like, 
you know, get like an Uncle Sam costume and put those on and walk through the parade that's going on pretty soon. 11 foot tall firebog. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you can be super tall, dude. Uh, another one is, in case you just feel like going skydiving, a backpack parachute. That's right. And if you use this parachute, uh, as long as you have a 10-foot cube around you to open it up so that way it doesn't get hit by anything, um, then you don't take falling damage. If you get the parachute out in time, uh, you can use it as a reaction if you're falling, or you can just use it as a regular action just to pop it out for no fucking reason if you want to. Uh, and if you are falling less than 60 feet, it doesn't work because you don't have time to deploy it. But if it's more than 60 feet and it actually deploys properly, then you don't take falling damage, so it can help you, you know, if you want to go paratrooping through the city, jumping off of Is it reusable? Yeah, but it takes 10 minutes to pack the parachute back up, though. So, I mean, if you're in the middle of danger, you might not be able to pack it back up and have to cut the cord and leave it. But, yes, if you have 10 minutes to repack it, you can use it again. So, or there is... A barking box, which is a little box, and you can use your action to crank it up, and it works for eight hours at a time. Uh, and whenever it's active, uh, it can detect vibrations from within 15 feet of it if it's on the same surface. So, like if you set it on the ground, then anything within 15, if there's vibrations within 15 feet of it, even small ones, the box will alert you, and you can set it to be a quiet bark or a, a loud bark, and it sounds like a dog barking. So, or again, if you put it like on a wall, then anything within 15 feet of it that is shaking a wall or whatever will, the barking box will let you know of it. So a box filled with cats. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, or, yeah, this one, I'm not really sure what it's going to be good for, except for drug use, but a matchless pipe. So it's a pipe with the flint built in, and um, whatever you put in there, it'll light up on its own, so you don't have to even bother, you know, using a lighter. So if you just want to get stoned and you don't feel like using two hands, there you go. So. <laughs> that one sounds super useful. <laughs> it does. I don't know why that's in there, but I'm sure you guys can find something to do with it. If you guys succeed, then you guys can each choose one of those. So, Plus the money. Yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty resourceful with a jar of bees, so that pipe might work. <laughs> can have a jar of bees in one hand, your pipe in the other. Speaking of that, do you guys uh, remember who you ran into last week? Shops opening. Oh yeah, uh, the the fantasy cask out. Mm-hmm. The uh, Dell, I think his name is. Is that Dell the funky Homo yeah. sapien? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, if you guys want to, um, you guys can absolutely stop by there because he is open today. So you guys can do that just any time. He he's but now just to remind you guys so uh, let's drop by before we head out to the dock ward the dock ward's in the south anyway so we'd have to go somewhat near that way anyway Sound yeah I'm good? down to stop there yeah it's coming up on 3.30 yeah. anyway so might as well stock up okay then you guys are on the way there um, nothing eventful really happened on the way you guys are just cruising through the city and stuff it's a little quieter today than usual there's not as many pedestrians and shit out and townsfolk because of the explosion this morning kind of put a damper just, just by day. definition there's not as many because 11 of them are in the morgue that is true <laughs> so there's not as many living people in people town. quieter <laughs> but uh, since then there's probably been at least like five babies born somewhere so you know makes up for it but so you guys head in you guys going to fantasy costco shop yep yeah cool all right and when you guys head inside you hear um music somehow playing <laughs> did you get which it you don't really what oh okay i was curious if you if you looked up the fantasy costco song no actually i remember it from yours but it's gonna yeah but you guys uh when you guys open the door and you go through you hear ding ding welcome to fantasy costco y'all and then you hear music playing but it's not uh it's not like elevator music and you don't know where the hell it's coming from anyway, because when you guys look around, at least, unless they're hiding somewhere, you don't see any people playing any, any instruments or anything. Uh, but you hear music that has, like, a, a lot of bass in it playing. Like, you know, if you knew what beats were, that's what they would be. And so there's just really uh, bass tunes playing, but you don't see anybody playing a bass anywhere. So, And when you guys walk inside, uh, you know, and, and the little chime goes off and everything, 
Dell looks over. It's like, oh, hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the shop. Finally open today. Yep, we wanted to come by and see things. All right, and you guys looking around the shop, you do see some stuff, and he says, uh, uh, inventory's a bit limited now. Still just kind of stocking up. Um, the, the stuff that I sell isn't your standard goods, so I can't really just restock on a regular basis. Like, none of the uh, none of the local guilds sell anything, you know, that I can uh, sell. I, I don't have your typical fare here, so I kind of have to wait until new items come in, because I get pretty, pretty curious things. But uh, you're welcome to check out what I have, and he starts showing you guys around, so... And hang on, I'm going to... I didn't get all the items and stuff in here yet. I'm going to um, have you help me with that, Gene, when we get a chance. But I'll give you guys a list of the items, and you're not going to be able to use them today anyway, of course. But sure. then I'm going to post that in Discord. So, And then, obviously, if you guys get anything, then we will make the actual items for them and stuff, of course, and put it uh, in your inventory. So this is the stuff that he has on hand. I'm going to post it in the general chat. And are you guys looking around the shop and stuff? Or are you just uh, no, talking? Definitely looking around. Okay. And uh, you don't even really need checks or anything with this. Uh, but when you guys look around, you notice that uh, the decor of the place, again, it's a really nice place and stuff. There's not a whole lot of items yet, again, but they do seem like really interesting things, which you'll get to in a minute. Uh, and with the decor of the place, you notice that there's a lot of like you know stuffed or otherwise paintings, stuffed animal statues and stuff like that of gorillas. Uh, and then you also look around and notice that there is uh, tablets and stuff like that. They, they look like not, I mean, they're not old or whatever, so you're assuming they're replicas, but uh, tablets that have what look like really old, not even langu well, languages, yes, written on them, but they're symbols. They're not even words. So like a, like a hieroglyphics is what you would you know know it as if uh, that were an actual term in this world or whatever. So kind of the decor of the place. Oops. Bam. There you go. The list of the items he has so far. Oh, and if anyone can tell me the, uh, which you probably can't, but the reference between the decor of the place and the shop owner's name, if anybody can tell me that reference without looking it up, I'll give you guys inspiration, whoever can. What? Which reference? It's it kind of, it's a real life reference, but the, uh, the correlation between the shop owner's name and the decor of the shop that I just told you guys about. Oh, I didn't. I didn't recognize the name. What was the uh, decor again. I'm sorry. Uh, old symbols, like hieroglyphics type symbols, and then um, lots of like uh, stuffed gorillas, monkey, or um, uh, like gorilla statues, just different kinds of gorillas. Yeah, that one's vague. Nobody's gonna get that one. So, I was just curious. Um, uh, Del the Funky Homo Sapien is actually a rapper in real life, and he was in two different groups. One was called Hieroglyphics and then one was The Gorillas. You probably remember The Gorillas from the late 90s, that song Clint Eastwood. He was a member of that band. So that's where the dumb name comes from. I've never heard the name before. I remember The Gorillas, though. They had... Uh... God damn it. I, I know that one song anyways by them. Yeah. It was like late the 90s. They had one or two songs. So, yeah. And then he was in a rap group in like the early 90s called Hieroglyphics. That's where he started. So. Uh. Can you even hit you zombies with it? <laughs> yep. You guys see anything that catches your fancy in there? That grappling hook could be useful. I have a regular grappling hook, but that's more than I have, though. Yeah, we'll just say this one's, like, spring-loaded or something somehow, so it's better than your... Obviously much better than your standard chair. It's, a, like, a Zelda hook shot? Yeah, exactly. Can it or pull like boxes claw to me? <laughs> Actually, you know... Maybe we will make it do that because that's a pretty hefty price, so that's not a bad idea. I actually like that. So, say it's like retractable instead of just a hook with a rope, you know? Somehow, I like that. It's cold and hurdy. <laughs> it is cold and hurdy. <laughs> Pillow. Well, I can only afford the uh, the regular bees. I can't get them uh, radioactive ones. So, well, you guys are going to be making some money when you find this uh, construct. Or if we find so. this stone and steal all the money. <laughs> you guys can do whatever the mm -hmm. fuck you want. Just buy the entire fantasy Costco shop. Oh, yeah. Well, they are bees, duh. 
I'm just gonna get that uh, that pipe fill it full of oregano and charge people like one gold to smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> Go hang out outside the high school. <laughs> That's a good idea. I knew you were looking something in or looking for something in a uh, uh, painter's pole, G. So you might uh, like what you see there. Not actually for painting, of course. I mean, it's just it's just a metal pole, though. <laughs> like, why would it be five hundred gold? It's a fucking pole. I could do that with anything. And and Dell's like, uh, he's like, oh well. By the way, it's not just a regular pole. And he looks at the groove. So like, you can screw different tips in on this. And uh, I haven't really seen too many uh, tips that would be useful. But I do have one. And he pulls it out. And it's uh, like a almost like a it's it's a tip, but it has two different. Um, uh, it's almost, almost, like, almost like a fork, like a tuning fork kind of thing, but they're both sharp, you know? So it's not a trident, but like a two-parted thing. And uh, he says, uh, this tip, if you buy the pole, of course, it's, I'll just throw in this tip for free. And um, the tip has like like little holes in it and stuff that seem like they would uh, uh, soak up liquids well. And you could put like a little you know, liquid on the end of each, each one. And he's like, I know if I was to uh, use this thing, you could you know, apply poisons or whatever. You could probably put one of each different kind on here. And, Get both of X when you stab somebody. <laughs> you really, you, you realize how overpowered that would be, G. Is it okay? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't fucking care. I'll just I make the guy. No, so it's. So. it's... Oh, just wait. If you play your cards right, you'll get something even better. So that you're just going to be like, oh, that's just way too fun. So, but later on, of course, but to go with your pokey pole. So. This longbow, is it just a really nice longbow, or does it have anything? Like, is it just a regular longbow? Dell says, uh, I've seen this uh, bow before. I've never seen craftsmanship like this before. Uh, I don't even exactly know where it came from, but I've never seen anybody make anything like this before. Uh, and he's like, the, the tensile strength on this is beyond anything else I've ever seen before. Like, it doesn't even seem to really make sense physically. He's like, uh, if you... If somebody that knew what they were doing, if a good archer used this thing, I think they can uh, make those arrows go quite a bit faster than your standard longbow, which is pretty amazing. I think you can penetrate even even more, and, you know, do even more damage with your arrows. Shoot arrows through walls. That's right. <laughs> it's the 50 cal of bows. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hmm. Well, I want that, but I'm going to have to wait till we get paid. <laughs> yeah, I don't have enough money right now either. We'll have to come back after we smash up a robot. He says, oh, I'm, I'm glad you guys... Those, I might grab those jars of bees. You got it. You, your standard jar, or do you have enough for the, the radioactive uh, bees? I only have enough for the standard. Okay. So, I mean, if you want both, you can, but I mean... If you want the regular one now, you can go ahead. It's all up to you. Because you guys are going to be getting that 500, well, you know, assuming that you complete your task, get another 500 from that. So. Yeah, that's true. I'll hold off. Okay. Is there an oh, upgrade guys... fee? Like, can you just make the ones that are in the jar? Like, can he pay the extra four hundred bucks later on, four hundred gold later on, to just get the ones that are in his current jar radioactive? He says, uh, "Yeah, it, I mean, it's probably going to take at least a few weeks or a month or so, but I can mail them to Chernobyl, come back. They'll be back dead. Bees don't live that long. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Even when they're not radioactive." <laughs> and he says. Uh, you know, I'm always, uh, you know, I'm. You see the kind of stuff I have here. You're not not standard fare things that have a little bit of an extra oomph to them. If you guys ever come across anything that you don't want to keep yourself, I'll be happy to buy it from you. Or if you uh, hear of any items out there, just let me know where they're at and uh, see if I can secure them for the shop. So yeah, we'll keep that in mind. We we'll always have to come back after we make some more money. Man, can you imagine my intimidation smoking that vape pen holding a jar of bees? Yeah, green bees. <laughs> they get all hulked out. Sweet. Should make a special helmet for Ghost that uh, has like a little bee, <laughs> bee releasing jar. <laughs> get Ghost to bark it and then it opens the jar and the bees come yeah. flying out. And every time, yep, every time he barks. That's what it'll be. Maybe we can get like a little thing on a helmet that like throws little splashes of honey, and then like the bees will just go after whatever the honey lands on. There you go. So then he can guide the bees. 
Socko, do you even know what we're talking about every time we talk about this this dog that barks and when it barks it spits bees at you? Well, I, I know that you were talking about ghost barking and it's a cat. Yeah, it's so it's from... Let me see if I can find it, actually. There's got to be a YouTube clip. That's what I'm looking but, for. But a, a I think I've shooting seen anything is perfect. Uh, quick question. Do you have any idea how I ended up with four healing potions? Because <laughs> I thought I only bought one. Yeah, Didn't I thought we... you only bought one. Didn't we Did find you... some I think when we, we were in the a... warehouse or something? Yeah, two and two, I think, and I think you guys split it up or something. Because I, I, okay. I can make them. I already have some, so I didn't need any more. And then we should also still have the, uh, the little foldy paper thingies that turn to birds too, right? Yeah, yeah you guys those. still have the paper bird. Yeah. And then Akasha has that charm of restoration too. So. Yeah. Which, by the way, I've tied it onto ghost armor. Okay. Okay. So he has it with him. Just don't forget that ghost does have that with him if you guys ever need it. A greater restoration or a lesser restoration. So... He so, locked the door. Next week, then, um, I get. Well, I, I guess. Where do we go next week? Do we go to the dock ward and go, you know, try to find this nimble right and take care of that first, and then after that we try to go to the uh, uh, Growlhorn Villa. Maybe we should go to the Growlhorn Villa because if they're not working together, then that. Thing is probably going after what's his name who took the stone oh okay you know what i didn't even think about it from that perspective you're you're suggesting that at least maybe the construct was trying to prevent mcdudson from stealing the stone yeah like maybe he was trying to get it for something else but erstol or whatever his name is took it instead yeah that could be all right then what do you think Sako? we'll go to growlhund villa first and then go look for if, if mcdudson isn't there if the robot isn't there then we could go to the docks later and look for him yeah that sounds good we would at least get a ping while we're there anyways if he if he happens to be there so we would know ahead of time for some advanced warning yeah i don't have too much time but at least uh we can see what's going on i mean next week i mean for when we start next week because we've got to i assume we'll be wrapping it up here shortly so yeah, I think we should at least get a hit on something. Like, check it out. Yeah, you guys can do it either, either way you want to, but if you want to go uh, to the dock first, then you guys can meet up with... Because you know there was two ships, at least. There was uh, one, at least, of uh, Construct seen on each ship, Heartbreaker and Hellraiser. So you could go check and see if either of those are the ones that you're looking for, because you don't know if they which one it could be. Uh, and then if not, then I'm sure the crew might be able to tell you a little bit more about possibly some other ones that are around because they must be familiar with them because they've had them on their ship for you know it was at least a month ago or whatever or maybe longer than that but uh dalakar saw at least a month ago the one on the hellraiser so did you want to do that now Sako, or were you you meaning next week oh probably next week i only have like a few minutes here it's almost 3 30 yeah okay well then uh 23rd everybody good for the 23rd 